of his tibia. University of Indianapolis Greyhound Football on the ISC Sports Network is presented in part by Free Enterprise System, the official travel agency for Greyhound Athletics. Free Enterprise System, anything else is just a bus ride. By Prairie Farms, Indiana's Dairy. By IMCU, IMCU proudly supports UND Athletics and offers a free UND debit card. Show your school spirit and get yours at imcu.com. By Gordon Flesh. Technology that works, people who perform, please visit us at gflesh.com. By Aqua Systems, with a knowledgeable staff of water experts in multiple locations, Aqua Systems has been helping people improve their water since 1959 and proud to support the University of Indianapolis. And by the Ray Skillman Automotive Group. Go to rayskillman.com for your best deal. On what is another remarkable evening, that haze you see, that's just the fireworks that have gone off here on the south side of Indianapolis. It is the penultimate home game of the regular season for you, Indy, as they take on the Miners of Missouri S&T. Alongside Dave Burke, my name is Greg Rakestraw. Thanks for joining us for University of Indianapolis Greyhound Football here on ISC and Comcast 81. Our pregame show is a service of our friends at Indiana Members Credit Union. Last week, Dave, we saw the Hounds get up 42-10. Then Quincy had the ball, and it was 45-38. Hounds would get a pick. Hounds would get a touchdown. Would won their record to 3-0. But uh, making sure the full 60 minutes is being played, that's, I'm sure, a big talking point of Chris Kievers this week. I, I can only imagine, uh, you know, what the emphasis was this week. Probably every time they started a period of practice, uh, anytime you start, you know, a period of practice, there, there's great intensity. But I promise that it was a, a point of emphasis that they finished with the same intensity every drill. Our matchup, as you saw earlier, a service of the folks at Gordon Flesh and you also see part of the story for you, Indy, as well as that Toriano Clinton remains out due to the ankle injury. Connor Kinnett, again, starting quarterback. We know he is done for the season as well. Christian Conklin replacing him. So with that, let's get to our player to watch, which is presented by Prairie Farms. And how about Jaquan Buchanan a week ago? Filling in for Toriano Clinton. He had seven carries all year. Last week, he picks up four touchdowns, three of them of the rushing variety. Yeah, and a couple of times, you know, we noted Man, he made runs that were very reminiscent of Toriano Clinton in that as he got to the second level of the defense and, and took contact, his ability to keep his balance, maintain his balance, and then accelerate into an even longer run, uh, you know, gives, I'm sure, the coaching staff, along with the UND fan base, uh, a sense of encouragement for tonight that while Toriano Clinton's not playing, there's a guy back there that can handle the ball. Our injury report is brought to us by Community Health Sports Medicine. Sports medicine coverage provided by Community Health Network, the official sports medicine provider of the University of Indianapolis, and it's the guys that are on your screen. UND won the toss. They elected to defer, so Missouri S&T will have the football first. We've talked about Jaquan Buchanan. What you see from Christian Conkling in his second career start last week? Well, he, he throws the ball really well, and he, he did a nice job, um, especially early in the game, of finding his primary read. If it wasn't there, he immediately went to number two. Uh, I talked to Coach Keepers a little bit after the game. He felt like later in the game, Quincy started blitzing him a little bit, and, and he, he, it, it kind of sped up his thought process yep. a little bit, which is to be expected. He, he's a senior, but you know that's the first time he's probably played as many minutes as he had the past two games since he was in high school. So obviously the speed of the game is going to be a, a, you know, a big factor for him. Should be better tonight than he was a week ago. Let's get to our keys of the game. They are presented by the Free Enterprise System. Home field advantage. UND lost to ST for the first time ever last year in Rolla. They've never been defeated by him here. Well, and 
when you're playing, you get to play two weeks in a row at home. Uh, you got the home crowd. You got a beautiful night. You got to take advantage of it. Finish the game. We talked about yep. 42 to 10. Uh, and it gets to a 45-38 game. And, and, and granted, Quincy's quarterback got really hot. But at the same time, you got to finish the game. And then for the Hounds offensively, uh, number 45 from Missouri S&T, uh, outside linebacker, defensive end, Ben Stratman, <clears throat> led the nation in sacks a year ago, ha- is putting up some big numbers again this year. They've got to know where he is and make sure that they uh, protect uh, quarterback Christian Conklin. It is the second week in a row that UND is facing a team that has a certified NFL prospect with, sadly, UND's certified NFL prospect being on the sidelines in terms of Toriano Clinton. Again, the hope is that he would play today. He did not. Will he play against William Jewell next week? We'll see. Do I think he plays against Truman here in the home finale? Absolutely. I think that will be the case. And again, UND and Truman enter today both at 3-0 in GLVC play. Missouri S&T, 3-5 overall on the season. Ward for the kickoff. Fielded by S&T. At the 10-yard line, we're underway here on ISC and Comcast 81. Good return that is still taking place and brought down at the 38-yard line. It is Cole Field that makes the tackle for UND before the Miners will start this drive at their own 38-yard line. Our starting lineups are presented by the Ray Skillman Automotive Group. Staten King is the quarterback for Missouri S&T. Cameron Smith will be the running back that we will talk about throughout the course of today's game. ST had two guys go over 100 yards last week, so you, you can bet UND is uh, going to be cognizant of the run here uh, in the early downs. Smith, 598 yards rushing on the season. Fake the handoff ball is tipped, and good job by Mike Brown. He's put his hands on the receiver, said, no, nope, you're not getting that one. Second down. Right, and as soon as that ball's tipped, it's it's live. Quick check of the UND defense, and last week it was Mike Brown that had a pair of interceptions. Could have had a pick six had there not been a block in the back behind the play. Senior, Kiave Guerriere, always a player to watch out of Evansville Central. Quarterback King, 825 yards passing. Seven touchdowns, four picks. Again, he looks to throw. Catch is made, first down. 11-yard pickup tackle made by Cavante Houston. But that is a first down for Missouri S&T. Isaiah Wright on the catch. Yeah, they're, they're running a little uh, RPO here, uh, which coming off a week where you've got 300 yards rushing as a team, you know, put the ball in the, in the stomach of the running back, see how the defense responds. If they commit one extra guy to the box to, to stop the run, you pull it out and make the throw to the slant from uh, the number two receiver. Maybe hard to run an RPO this time because the empty backfield here for Missouri s and Five wide receiver set. Play clock is at seven. Takes a snap. Quarterback draw. UND was wise to it. Ben Honius. Puts a shoulder into Staten King, a gain of two, second and eight. Yeah, you know, great in theory, uh, and, and then you realize that you're running quarterback, you know, no no lead draw into one of UND's top players, top tacklers for the past three years in, in Honeyus. Honeyus, one of the many Missouri natives on this UND roster. So second and eight. King throws, looking for the deep ball and tipped away. Great job in coverage that time by Brandon Thomas. Now normally you worry about the guy not turning and facing the football. He did a good job though of not impeding the progress of the s and receiver. It's third down. Yeah, a really good job. He doesn't turn around and find the ball, but what he does do is avoid contact and at the last minute, as the s and receiver goes for the ball, then he gets that hand up and he's trying to play the ball through the hands of the receiver. So third down and eight. Hounds walking up a couple of backers. Radebush amongst them. Hounds bring four. Ball thrown, catch made, first down. Already a second and 10 conversion, now a third and eight conversion as well. Ball now at the 37-yard line, a 12-yard pickup. Receiver, Blaze Klosner from Missouri S&T. Good job there, uh, play design. 
UND, a lot of times in that nickel package that they, they employed just on that last play, they're going to rush three, and sometimes they drop eight. Other times they'll bring five, and they were able to find the soft spot in the zone in between the safeties and the linebackers. For Glossner, his 14th catch of the season. So second first out of the drive. Fake the handoff, looking to throw the deep ball and just overthrowing his man. That was Paulvin Horton. Horton just kind of broke off his route for a moment throughout the timing of that play. Horton, 13 catches on the campaign, second down. Yeah, second week in a row, Greg, we've got white jerseys with gold numbers. and There will, there will be a, a, an email sent to Jim Namovich in the conference office about that, if not a good-natured rib when I see him at the America's Crossroads Bowl coming up December the 3rd, that perhaps we legislate that out of the league going forward. Because Missouri s &T fans, it's going to take us a while to identify your players because of that color combo. Just giving you the heads up now. Second and ten. Hounds bring four. King looks at incomplete pass. Contact there a little early by Houston, but not enough to necessitate a whistle. I think that was King more or less throwing the ball away third down. I think that's exactly what he did. I, I think in his mind, he saw the running back early. And then he saw Kevante Houston screaming, you know, downhill from the safety position. And he, you could see it right there. He took a peek to like, ooh, am I going to get the guy on the, on the slant? And he didn't like it, so he just threw it away. Potential four down territory here for the Miners, especially depending on what happens on this play. Again, blitz coming. Sack going to happen. I think that spells the punt team coming on for Missouri S&T. It is Aaron Barnett that makes the play a loss of eight for S&T. So pre-snap, you got uh, uh, Staten King there is looking. He thinks he's going to get inside pressure. And, and something gets communicated, and all of a sudden, instead of bringing the in interior pressure, here comes number nine, Brandon Thomas, from the secondary, walks up and comes off King's right, uh, applies pressure, and by that time, Aaron Barnett has beat the offensive tackle back to the inside, and, and as King steps up, there's Barnett ready for him for the sack. Barnett now four and a half sacks on the year. Good-looking punt. Marquez Gillip had a kick return for a touchdown last week. It'll be a... Fair catch on the punt return this week for the young man from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. And the Hounds will start kick over at their own 14-yard line. Quick look at the offensive starters for Uindy. Again, Christian Conklin gets his third career start. The kind of the program kid at quarterback, senior out of Pendleton Heights High School. Jaquan Buchanan again in for Toriano Clinton. You'll see a lot of he. You'll see a lot of Letty Bennett in the background as well. One thing you noted, Dave. Switch at left tackle. True freshman Ryan Butts going to get the opportunity uh, this afternoon. Yeah, uh, and, and I don't know, maybe Tyler Rudy got dinged during practice. Just something I noted on the depth chart uh, as we were sitting up here doing our pregame check. Conklin finds Jeremiah Lee. Lee tackled shy of the first down marker, but he'll take eight yards on first down every time, second and short. Yeah, yeah real easy, you know, little fade flat combination here. Uh, to the wide side of the field, and Jeremiah Lee comes open. Conkling ready to throw on time in rhythm and, and puts the ball on the money. For Quick Jeremiah. Peak. Jeremiah Lee, 13th catch on the season. Does have two touchdowns. Give the handoff to Buchanan. Trying to find a seam. Cuts up field and does enough to get the first down. This will cross the 24 yard line. Good solid gain on second down. Move the chains. Let's take a look at the defensive starters for Missouri S&T. And again, pointed them out on the keys. They're in the bottom of the screen. Stratman, 6'1", 230-pound senior. He is kind of the, the swing point for this Missouri S&T defense. 17 and a half tackles for loss and eight sacks in eight games played. Lee the motion man. Miners bring four. Conklin. Looks, throws, Alonzo Derrick comes back to get the ball. Cuts up field, picks up nine. Solid gain, three plays running for UND. Yeah, really good job of patience by Christian Conkling in, in the pocket. And then Derrick, he runs, he ran double curls there. Derrick's covered at first, and then he just works himself into a window that Conkling can find. He doesn't get stressed out that the ball didn't come out when he thought it should, and, and makes a nice throw. Lenny Bennett. Now is the ball carrier. Fake the handoff, quick hitter, 
catch made, but tackle made as well. That's Lee's second grab, but again, enough to move the chains. Four and five yards at a time. Hounds will take it first down. Yeah, uh, a little RPO action there. <clears throat> Trying to take advantage of, of Stratman as he attacks the box and then attacks the line of scrimmage, pull it out and make the nice easy throw. The thing that you noted there, or I noted, the safety's coming downhill to make that tackle. You wait, and at some point, Unity's gonna play action and try and throw a post over his head. High snap, Conkling almost dribbled it, and then thankfully pounced on it. Would have been calamitous for the Hounds. They will simply take the loss of four or five, second down. Yeah. Obviously running in a little jet motion there with Jeremiah Lee. I don't know if, if the intent was to get him the ball on the jet sweep or use that as some type of counter bootleg or something like that. But good play by Conkling to get a hold of it and, and avoid losing the ball. It's the first time the Hounds been behind the chains in tonight's game. Fake the handoff to Bennett. Conkling, here comes pressure. Is that a loose football? I hear a whistle. Uindy's got the football regardless. And it is going to be ruled to be an incomplete pass as the ball is going back to the line of scrimmage. That time the pressure applied by Aiden Hurtado, senior defensive end for the Miners. Yeah, that, I mean, obviously good pressure applied by uh, S&T right there. But that, that play is a result of what happened on first down and, and the bad snap and the, the loss of five yards. Because the ball went forward, it doesn't count as a sack. It's an incomplete pass. Hurtado with three sacks on the season. So third and 15. Again, Miners bring pressure. Conkling throws, but could not get into the throw as he was absolutely mauled on that play and that's Stratman. Uh, uh, you know, uh, he's coming from off the left edge. And there's, well, true freshman, Ryan Butts. And you know, you're, you're absolutely getting thrown into the fire right there. Uh, in your first collegiate start. So Ryan Zoller, the punter, is on. Both teams move the ball for a first down or two and then see their drive stall. Catch is made, fair catch at the 22-yard line. Pretty solid effort by Zoller. It'll be a kick of 46 yards with no return. That's a great punt. Tonight's game presented in part by IMCU. Proud to support the University of Indianapolis and offers a free UND debit card with a free checking account and e-statements. Get your UND debit card today and show your school spirit. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online at imcu.com. Membership savings required, federally insured by the NCUA. On the handoff, Honeyus, solid and run support. So was Brandon Thomas crashing in from the corner position. It is a gain of one. The ball carrier, Cameron Smith for s &T. Yeah, nice job by the defensive line there. Good push. Uh, allows the linebackers to run free uh, and, and make that tackle near the line of scrimmage. Thomas, a redshirt freshman from Centerville, Ohio. Second and nine. Hounds bring five. Throwing the deep ball and adjustment on the route. Catch is made. Mavungu was in coverage. S&T will cross the 50-yard line. C.J. Jarman on the grab. And they'll get forward progress to the UND 42. Yeah, and the great catch, great concentration there uh, by the receiver. And what they're doing is they're taking those shots down the field on one-on-one -on -one coverage. If you and these safeties are going to play hard and heavy into the run game, they've got to be able to complete those one-on-one -on -one balls on the outside. They're going to mark him at the 45. So that's a catch for 33 yards. And again, empty set in the backfield here for the Miners. Quick hitter and no gain. Mavungu was in coverage and he had his mitts all over the receiver. He was behind the line of scrimmage. And because he's behind the line of scrimmage, he was also being blocked while covering said receiver. Second down. But he did a really nice job there. He's up in press coverage against that empty, and they're they're trying to turn the, the middle receiver out to block, and Mavungu just 
latches, you know, keeps one arm free, latches on the receiver, uh, and does a nice job making the pass break up. Until the line of scrimmage, that's legal. Have at it. Second and 10. Honeyus just missed time the blitz. Toss goes right side. It'll be a five yard pickup. Again, that's Smith, the ball carrier. Third down. Yeah, good, good play there. Good use of the hard count. You get a good idea of the blitz. You do have the right play called and, and quickly get the ball to the outside with the tailback. So last time on third down across the 50 yard line, you Indy dialed up a blitz and picked up a sack. Let's see if the same is in the cards here. Already the midway point of a quickly moving opening quarter. Make the handoff, here comes the pressure and Kiave Guerriere knocked that one down with his teeth. Put his hands up, but that was straight into his face mask and looks like the punt team is gonna come on for the Miners. Really like the design of that pressure with Kyle Borski. Maybe, you know, Aaron Barnett does a really nice job in pass rush, but Kyle Borski, uh, the career he's had, teams know they've got a scheme for him. He goes inside and then you bring Guerrier hard off the edge. The tackle stays with Borski and it puts Kiave. He's able to shorten the edge and get his hands up and get that knockdown. Hound's playing a safe punt. I mean, just one man back. That is Derek. Parker Boyce is on to kick this ball away. End over end kick. Derek calls for a fair catch. He'll make it at about the nine yard line. Solid effort by s &T. Tonight's game presented in part by Free Enterprise. Proud to be the official transportation provider for Greyhound Athletics. As you know, teamwork makes the dream work at Free Enterprise. We'd love to be a part of your team by providing transportation for your group. We can move groups of any size from event shuttles, youth groups, to campus shuttles and more. There's no group our team can't accommodate. Contact one of our travel consultants today at TravelFE.com and book with Free Enterprise. Anything else is just a bus ride. An errant snap stalled the last UND drive. Take the handoff on the slant. That's Frank Bentley. Bentley keeps the legs going. We'll have a first down before being slung back at about the 21 yard line. The native of Louisville will pick up 11. Yeah, I, I like that play because what it does is it makes 45. It makes Ben Stratman play in space versus let him dictate what's going on and his ability to blitz off the edge. J just when you've got a player as dynamic as he is, you want to make him pause. S&T beat UND last year, one of UND's four losses last season. First time in nine meetings that the Miners had gotten the better of the Greyhounds. Handoff goes to Buchanan, tries to bounce it outside, and again, gets a yard at most. Edge was set that time by s &T. Jack Hayes in on the tackle, second and long. Yeah, I mean, at some point, Jaquan Buchanan, he's, he's going to pop one. You know, right now, s and is doing a nice job uh, maintaining their gap integrity, and, and you know, nothing has, has really shown up for Jaquan just yet. Kellen Porter now is the setback with McNeilis lined up right in front of him. Again, pressure applied. Conkling looking for the deep ball, looking for Lee, and Lee had just kind of come towards the middle of the field. Conkling thought he was going to stay on the hash marks. It's third and long. Yeah, that, that's one of those that you really want the receiver to continue on that deep pattern, and if the quarterback wants to flatten him out, the ball is going to flatten him out, and it's Correct. hard to redirect back to the deep side where Conkling, you know, where Conkling saw the opening there. Uh, it, you know, that's kind of the coaching point is run the deep part of it and he can he can flatten you out. Last time on third and long, s and brought a jailhouse blitz. Basically, everybody was running. All right now they're lining up with just four. Play clock at two. Three-man rush. Conklin looks, looks, throws, and again, Bentley had a soft spot. Conklin just didn't see him or didn't accurately find him. Right, that was a matter of, I, I think he saw everything and then just missed the throw. I mean, he does a nice job, finds, you know, works himself around in the pocket. I don't know, we'll get a good look at it right here. Yeah, he just, he, that ball just sailed on yeah. him. 
So Zala is on. Last kick was 46 yards. Snap was a little wide. Zoller did a good job of just taking his time. And wasn't exactly a rugby style kick, but it was a running punt. And this one will roll all the way down to the 33 yard line. And that'll be another 45 yard effort. The best thing is neither one of them got returned. Correct. The first one, he did a nice job. That ball landed in between the numbers and the sideline, or was caught in between the numbers and the sideline. This one, he hits, and it's a, it's a little shorter, but there's no return because the ball gets on the ground. The drive number three commences for the Miners. Nearly 10 minutes into this one, and they are still scoreless. On the slant, and that was splitting two receivers that time. Both Jarman and Burns were the players closest to it for S&T. And I think if Mavungu hadn't been looking at the receiver, sure. it was more at him than the, other, than the two receivers. Truman won earlier, beating Quincy 59-32, so Truman stands at 4-0 in league play. He would be trying to catch them. Truman will come here in two weeks. First things first, Hound's got to take care of business against the visitors. Here comes pressure, and King has nowhere to go. Committee meeting in the backfield for you, Indy. Jacob Jones will be the last man off the pile. And now will we see King have to come out for a play because of losing his helmet? It appears that way. You, Indy, ran a little cross stunt there. Hunius goes from the left inside linebacker to the right A gap, and Chiave Guerriere goes from the right back to the left side. The running back saw, first saw Hunius, stepped left, didn't block him, but by the time he realized that his responsibility was Guerriere, Guerriere was by him and had the quarterback wrapped up. First sack of the season for Jacob Jones, the senior from London, Ohio. Third down and 14. And the backup quarterback is Max Kennard. Throws it and has it picked off. Throws into the zone. Cavante Houston makes the play. And Uindy, the benefactor of the backup quarterback, throwing an errant toss. Sometimes that's where you call the draw. That was about as easy picking as you could have from Cavante Houston. Pressure comes from Routabush and, and Guerriere again, but that, that ball just sails right out of his hand. He, he can't step into it. He's trying to drive the ball in on the curl there to uh, number 14, Horton. So for Cavante Houston, his third interception of the season. He's the third different Greyhound with three picks this year. Hand off Buchanan. And again, credit s &T, the running lanes have been clogged so far. Buchanan gets no gain. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see UND come back to that formation there where they've got three receivers to the left with the inside most receiver being a tight end and then a tight end on the backside. I, I would expect them to run it back to that tight end. And again, frankly, with no Kennett, no Clinton, I'd be sitting on the run game too defensively. Rory Heltzley, the man in motion. Good. Pressure picked up. Conkling looks, has Buchanan all alone. Buchanan tries to run through a tackle. He'll be taken down at the 20-yard line. It is a pickup of 19 and a first down at UND. Offensive line did a really nice job there. A lot of time for Christian Conkling to kind of sort through some things. He had a little mesh action going uh, underneath where uh, I think it was Alonzo Derrick was coming from the left to the right. And, and as all that's happening, Buchanan slips out into the left flat after he he checks to see if he's needed in the pass protection, and he's wide open. Wolf Retzloff had the tackle. Had time for s and Hand off to Buchanan. Delayed for a second, and again, just couldn't pop it free. Might get credit for a yard. Second and long, and again, a player loses his helmet. That is Henry Preckle. 6'4", 307-pound defensive tackle for s and Second and long. Lenny Bennett will come back in and 
His nickname is one of my favorite in football. Straight line, Lenny. Second and none. He's a really good inside zone runner. Five-man front being shown by s &T. Make the handoff. Conklin, buying time. May just tuck it and run. Tries to throw it, and he throws it away. Picked off by s &T. And going in both directions, those were two equally poor quarterback decisions. Interception for Stefan Kaplan for Missouri s &T. Really good job of getting outside. He's broken contain. Now, I really think he was trying to throw that to Jeremiah Lee and he just sailed it. But either way, when you're when you're in that position, you're down here inside, you know, the, the green zone almost to the red zone, that, that's gotta be a decision that you live to play the, the next down. So both teams with turnovers on their third drive of the game. We remain scoreless. And s &T takes over at their own 13-yard line. Fake the handoff. King slings it, finds a man, first down. 13-yard pickup. So Staten King again, let's point out, he didn't throw the interception. The backup did. He had to come out because of losing a helmet for a play. Catch is made by Isaiah Wright. First down, Miners. Same route that we saw completed multiple times last week by, Cl by Quincy. It's just a, a, an interior short post route by the number two receiver. He's running right at that field safety and he's going to break across his face and as long as the ball's thrown on time, it's really difficult for the defense to stop. That's going to be a false start and a person that should never commit a false start. The wide receiver and Paul Van immediately taps his chest, says my fault. So first and 15 and that is the first penalty on either side in tonight's game. Courtney, freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina, transfer from UNC Pembroke. Seven men in the box for UND and two safeties right behind. Safety blitz, throw in the flat, catch made, but then going to a knee was Horton to make the tackle, so he'll get the Penalty yardage back and one more at second down and nine. Yeah, you know, first and 15, Coach Cooper dials up the safety blitz right there. That happens and typically you're gonna see those cornerbacks give a little extra cushion because they know they don't have a safety, uh, have safety help over the top. He's able to come back and, and throw the hitch route back on the sideline. seconds left to go in this scoreless opening quarter. On the handoff, UND had it covered. Loss of two on the play. Third down and long. Really nice play there by Hanius. You know, just a nice job of, of reading uh, what the what's happening in front of him with the offensive line and knowing where the open space is, the only place that ball carrier could go. Uh, and he gets there and meets him at the line of scrimmage. That is Kai Martin, who is doing his best Ty Montgomery, playing running back and wearing number 88. Third down and 11. Line to gain is the 36. And Hounds show blitz. They bring five and... Oh my goodness, the open linebacker in Jalen Wilson was the only man close to it and could not hang on to the football. He may have had visions of a pick six dancing in his head. Yeah, they bring the pressure off the right side, which means that Wilson, the, the nickelback that comes in, he's just working out to, the, to his left to the flat. Uh, and he undercuts an out route. They're trying to run an out route to the sticks. And, and man, looked like he was going to take that one down the sideline. So this game is the exact opposite of the game that each of these two teams played last week. Good job by Gillen to pick that up. Better open field tackle that was just made by Martin. The belt ball's going to bounce right to you. Go ahead and grab it, which he did. Martin was ready for it and he takes over at the 33. Yeah, really nice tackle there. I, I, I like the decision. 
Ball's on the ground, and like you said, Greg, it, it hops right to him, grab it. Because if you beat that guy with the you know, way everything is set up, look at those black shirts, he's going to have a return. And as you know, as, as, as a former punter, you know that when the ball hits the ground, everybody lets up. Everybody thinks, oh, or, you know, either we're going to go down the ball, you don't think about the return guy anymore. You can often spring big plays, tip of the cap to S&T's special team. Yeah, really nice tackle there uh, by the, what was that, number 88, Martin. right? Yep. Martin, yep. Conklin. Four-man pressure out in the flat. It's Bennett. Bennett turns up field, has a blocker. First down inside the 50-yard line, knowing they had an unprotected blitzer coming in. Great job getting rid of that ball quickly. First down, Uindy, a gain of 20. Yep, really nice job. Uh, and, again, they're they're throwing the ball in areas where Stratton, where Stratman is lined up. And, and I, I, think that's, yep. yeah, I think that's I think that's a really good plan. Buchanan back in as the solo set back in the pistol formation. Give the handoff to Buchanan. Buchanan finds at least a little bit of running room. It'll be the final play of the quarter. He'll pick up three. That's it. Nothing, nothing through 15. We'll take this quick timeout as you're watching University of Indianapolis Greyhound football on the ISC Sports Network, the GLVC Sports Network, and Comcast 81. Remember, when it comes to pedestrian safety, <laughs> Greyhounds don't have nine lives. No mascots or linebackers were harmed in the making of this video. Back in my day, we didn't tailgate. We stood in the rain for three hours watching the grass grow, and we liked it. The second down coming up for you, Indy. They will have the football at the S&T 44-yard line. That's the look towards the south end of campus. The Community Health Sciences building across Hannah Avenue. The camera work of Dennis Glover high atop Kiesel Field at Key Stadium tonight. And alongside Dave Burton, Greg Rakestraw with you here on the ISC Sports Network. We're back here in two weeks when the Hounds host Truman. What we expect to be for the GLVC championship. Bennett in the backfield at second and seven. Four wide receiver set. Conkling throws in the flat. That's Caney. And Caney. It's stopping his tracks after a pickup of six. It'll be third down and a yard coming up. Yeah, nice play there. Uh, just again, a little fade flat concept. They ran it uh, first play of the game. He, he's throwing the ball out in the flat to Caney, turns it up, and, and now you got yourself in third and two. A lot of things available here, uh, trying to pick up the first down, and you're in an area where you get fourth and one, you might be going for it. Heavy formation here. McNeilis lined up right side. Fake the handoff that way. Conkling looking to throw. Throws the deep ball, has a man all alone, and that was the smartest penalty you could ever take. Yeah, if, if you don't make that contact right there, it's Uindy ball first and goal at the three. So Kamal Ransom, great play designed by Uindy, and that tells you they're going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah. Conkling does get pulverized by Stratman on that play. But again, you also are you're going to take that shot down the field. And again, let's talk about why that was such a great penalty. The foul against S&T goes against Matthew Hudson. In the pros, that's first and goal at the five-yard line. In high school or college, it's 15 yards. Live to play another day, on you go first down. Yeah, and, you know, obviously, I'm sure most defensive backs never want to say that they got beat deep, but when you do, getting beat deep yep. and getting a penalty is much better than giving up points. As we say on our high school broadcast, there's a difference in the Friday rules, the Saturday rules, and the Sunday rules. So, first and 10, you into the 24. Flip Buchanan, left side of the formation. Give the handoff, Buchanan. Again, gets a couple of yards. Credit S&T. Now, Buchanan kept the legs churning. 
but got nothing more for it. It'll be second and eight, and s &T really doing a great job of slowing down the run game. Yeah, they're doing a really nice job, and you know, something that we don't see very often right there, uh, Kedno Alexis, left guard Kedno Alexis, really good offensive lineman. He, he missed, he missed the linebacker. He, he kind of overran it, and the linebacker gets by him, and that's who hit Buchanan, and, and Jake Hahn wasn't able to run through it. By the way, in the first quarter, the two teams combined for three rushing yards. The sack yards are included in rushing yards in college football. Flag is thrown, and somebody got to off to a false start for the Greyhounds. That's Ryan Ritchie, the starting right tackle for the Hounds that must have had a flinch. Hand and Buchanan will come out. Lee and Kellen Porter will come in. Porter, a transfer from Missouri State. And again, for the uninitiated, Missouri State, Missouri S&T are two different places. Not that far apart, but they are two different places. Fake the handoff to Porter, give the handoff to Porter on the draw, and s and was not fooled. That's Bentley Hart, you see on your screen, that helped to make the play. Third down, and now if you're Uindy, you're also wanting to make sure you're still in field goal range here, depending on what you do on this snap. Yeah, Uindy's looking for a seven-yard play right here. And you never see Ryan Ritchie, gets, he gets beat across his face. <clears throat> maybe, maybe he knew <laughs> he was a step slower. And s &T showing blitz. They have gotten pressure on a frequent basis on Conklin. They bring five. Conklin steps up, falls out. And s and has got it. s and recovered it. Another drive that crosses the 30-yard line ends in no points for UND. Sack, fumble, recovery, and the Miners will have it at their 37. Yeah, so they they run the freeze play, the check with me, and then set the formation with three to the to the left side, and the route combination just took too long to develop for the pressure that S&T brought, uh, and Conkling's not able to, to hold on to the ball uh, as the pressure comes, and he's you know stripped as he's sacked. I didn't get a good view as to who had the sack. I can tell you Hurtado, the player that recovered the fumble. So with that, another drive ends with no points. And the Miners will begin anew. Trips to the top side. King underthrows his man, went to the second receiver, breaking out to the flat. That is Bryson Burns, second down. Yes, in the opening quarter, 74 yards passing for Missouri S&T, 71 yards passing for UND. The two teams almost identical in every way and clearly most importantly on the scoreboard. The difference right now is one more turnover committed by UND. They have two, S&T with one. Yeah, both, both offenses obviously struggling to get in any sort of consistent rhythm. Hand off, and that did not go well. There were no good alternatives on that play for Missouri S&T, and the primary wrecker that time for UND, well, it was Lance and Michael Dennison. Yeah, that that's a lot of pressure uh, right up the middle there for UND. Nice job by Lance and, and Dennison. Third down and 15. Dennison, the senior from Mishawaka, Marion. Lance, a sophomore from Hamilton Southeastern. So line to gain is the 47-yard line. Play clock at two. At one, zero, he didn't get it off. Not even close. And the back judge from some 30 yards away has that line of sight call. Yeah. And, and obviously King was had not looked at the clock because he was still motioning the tailback right, yep. and zero hit. And when you you know when you lose yardage on a play, that's when you are most apt to have that issue because it takes a while to kind of get set. Frankly, he got smacked on that play. Maybe was shaking some cobwebs out there too. 
So third down and 20. And so far, our players of the game might be punters, which I know makes you smile. After taking a big hit sometimes. <laughs> True. Hounds bring five. King just gets rid of it. Radebush has got it. He can return this one. He runs to a tackle, still going to the 10-yard line. The former high school quarterback, K.J. Radebush, makes the play. So again, it's the nickel package. You got three defensive linemen. Uh, they bring Thomas right there, number nine, and Chiave Guerrier as well. It, this is this is King's bad decision. Right. There, there's, I, I don't know if he thought he was outside the tackle box. He's trying to throw it away, and he can't get it up on it to get it out of bounds. But you know, he's throwing to no receiver there uh, that's wearing white. The, the receiver's wearing black. You are watching this teach tape for defense, not offense, so far in this game, as you can see from the score 19 minutes in. So the Hounds will have the football just outside of the 10-yard line. So it won't be first and goal, I don't think. Uh, trying to see where they're going to mark the football. Yeah, it's going to be first and 10 at the 11-yard line. Yeah. I wasn't sure. The chains are pretty far back there. Ransom, the player that motions across the formation. Conklin, catch made, but for minimal gain, for a yard, Ransom, and guess who on the tackle? And he was he was standing there the whole time. As, as this ball is getting thrown in the angle that we're looking at, I I felt bad for Ransom as the ball was in the air. <laughs> Second and nine. And off goes to Buchanan. Buchanan cuts back. Buchanan will score. There's the run play that finally pops. Jaquan Buchanan gets the first points of this game and his fifth touchdown in the last two weeks. And, and you know, you need to use a little motion from the outside in here. And then it's just, it's pin and pull. So Zach Clark and Kendall Alexis, it's, it's, it's old school wing T, buck sweep. Both guards are pulling. Great job by the center right there. Austin Keel gets the nose reached, which allows uh, Clark to get out and pull and trap, and then Kendall Alexis is going to lead him through. Great job up front by the big guys. Colin Seymour puts it right into your living room. 7 0 Greyhounds, 10 22 to play here in half number one. We're back in a moment as you're watching UND football on the ISC Sports Network. At Aqua Systems, we believe in one simple idea, that it should be easy to get great water. That's why we provide a hassle-free sales process with money-back guarantees and the best warranties anywhere, all on equipment made in the USA. In fact, at Aqua Systems, we make it so easy to fix your home's water that nine out of 10 people who shop with us buy from us. Contact Aqua Systems today. You'll love your water. When medical care is needed, where will you turn? With Communities Connect to Care program, one call or click finds you the closest open appointment. Request a time yourself or let us do it. From a primary care doctor or virtual visit to a med check or community clinic at Walgreens. Just call or click. You can go right to our website or to me. Connect to care from community. So Carter Ward set to kick this ball away. First points of the game. 10-22. Left to go here in the half. And the Hounds taking advantage of the Staten King turnover. Pressure was applied by Brandon Thomas, but to give you an idea, we have three more points than turnovers so far in this game. But the short field pays dividends for UIndy as the Hounds have a two-play, 11-yard scoring drive to 
claim the first points of this game. And, and good for UND's offense right there. I mean, they a couple times across the 30 uh, and not able to finish drives. So good job there, good run, uh, good job blocking up front. Hounds use three different kickers. Seymour for place kicking, Ward for kickoffs, and Zoller for the punts. Returnable kick from the nine-yard line. First kick, s &T brought out to the 38. This one, they will take out to the 30. Tonight's game on ISC presented in part by Aqua Systems. They offer water softeners, drinking water systems, water purification, problem water solutions, and bottled water. Visit online, aquasystems.com. Aqua Systems, your home water experts. Good look at the crowd at Key Stadium. Of course, most of campus off to the west. It's coming from downtown today in the IHSA Soccer State Finals, so kind of drove through campus to get here today. Old enough to forget there's so many dorms here these days on campus. Handoff, Smith, Mike Brown meets him. Smith lurches forward and picks up, call it two. Still, you know, nice job front four there by the UND uh, defense and, and obviously the linebackers and then Michael Hall coming down from his uh, safety position. Or Michael Brown, sorry. Brown, the former North Central Panther. Again, I frankly think Mike is a guy that, that's at UND in part because he got hurt his senior year and other teams have a chance to scout him because he's that good of a player. I think he is a real difference maker. Mike got hurt his second game of his senior year two years ago at North Central High School. It was also the COVID year that that happened, too. Second and eight. King slings it. King, and could the receiver stay in bounds? No. Man was open in terms of C.J. Jarman. Well, yeah, but, you know, what we noted after the loss on second down, they had the penalty on third and long because he's just taken a big hit. And on that play, as he's getting ready to throw the ball, he's got big number 96, Jacob Jones, right in his face. Uh, and, and I think he probably let go of it and a little too much on it, just trying to make sure that ball got far enough outside. Yeah, this is a game where the defensive lines are consistently winning the battle at the line of scrimmage, going in both directions. Hounds bring five. King throws and again overthrew his receiver. Mavungu was in coverage, and again on third and eight, the Hounds could drop two safeties back, and Brown had a look at that one too. Fourth down. Yeah, I mean, he's he's looking, and there you just see the guy who almost has an interception earlier who had dropped into coverage. Now, coming out of the nickel package, you see the number 41 right there, uh, Jalen Wilson on the inside blitz. And just doing a nice job, Coach Cooper and the defensive staff of, of disguising what they're doing out of that nickel package. Wobbly kick. Derek will feel. Returnable kick. Busted outside. Tries to plant his foot in the ground and cut back and got what he can out of it. Bring it all the way back to the 50-yard line. Well done by UND special teams. Well, uh, you know, we, we hear the joke a, a lot about out kicking your coverage, but that's kind of what happened right there. Such a good punt that it's too far down the field for his team to cover it. He gets it almost all over to the numbers, but Derek had the entire field to the right. Somebody got out of their, their lane and, and Derek turns it into a bigger turn. So first and 10 hounds at the 50. Now you Indy will vacate the backfield. Oh, they got him lined up right side of con. Oh, so beautiful. Yes. Yay. Go Hounds. Hand off. Buchanan bounces off a tackle. Buchanan looking for flags. There are none. He'll win the foot race. 50 and out. Touchdown, UND. Great. Running game seems to have kicked into gear in quarter number two. And, and, and it's not that he didn't have contact but again you know one of the things we talked about so they're running a little 
guard tight end or guard H counter right there. He waits for the kickout block from Zach Clark. He's waiting for Kevin McNeilis to lead him up through the hole, takes a little contact, but is ready for it, and then just explodes into the second level and makes it a foot race to the end zone. Also, great job by Frank Bentley to stay on his block and to not hold as Buchanan bounced that ball outside. Well noted, Greg. So Seymour with the extra point try, and this one is good. And all of a sudden, we have ourselves an offensive explosion. Hounds 14, Miners nothing. We'll take this quick timeout as you're watching GLVC football on the ISC Sports Network. Remember, when it comes to pedestrian safety, Greyhounds don't have nine lives. No mascots or linebackers were harmed in the making of this video. Back in my day, we didn't have inflatables for the kids. They played with sticks and stones, and they liked it. Go Hounds! So after an interception, a return by K.J. Radabush, UND scores two plays later. Then the Miners go three and out, punt the ball away. Alonzo Derrick takes it to the 50. Jaquan Buchanan scores on the first play of the drive, and suddenly it is a two-score lead. And now the Hounds will go short and directional on the kickoff. And S&T well, will bring it out to the 41 or two yard line, and that gambit did not work for the Hounds. No, I, you know, I think the thought process was probably if we pop this up, they'll fair catch it. And ST, nope, we're going to return it. And then now they've got pretty good starting position. So Miners will have the football at the 43 yard line. Missouri S&T, because of sack, still in negative yards in terms of yards rushing. Well, that's something they're going to have to get figured out. Now, King, uh, the past two series, has taken a couple pretty good hits, uh, and, and they have, still haven't been able to run the ball successfully. And that trend continues because a loss of one, maybe two. That time, the ball carrier, Josh Sanders, redshirt freshman from Mays, Kansas. And this is an ST team that ran the ball very successfully against McKendry a week ago. The second and a dozen. Again, Hounds bring blitz. Quick hitter. Catch is made. No, it's not. Dropped. Thought that the Tight end slash H back could keep his hands on it. He could not. That time the intended target for ST was Gabe Goodwin. Young man that transferred from conference rival Quincy. Third down. You and the Coach Cooper and the defense just doing a really nice job. You know, the they ran the cross stunt again with Hunnius and, and Garrier. And, and even though it doesn't get home, it, it's it's speeding up yep. Stat, uh, State and King. And it's once again forcing them into third and long. Rolling pocket. King throws it, but again, nowhere close to a first down. Jarman makes the grab, but for a yard or two, and after being spotted, outstanding field position, the punt team will once again have to come on for Missouri S&T. Yeah, nice job there getting pressure by uh, number 92, Dylan Shelton. So, you know, S&T, change up the, the look a little bit there, give him a little sprint out, a little roll out, and, and still just not not anything happening down the field for S&T right now. Great look at Chris Kievers, his 29th year at the University of Indianapolis, fourth as the head coach, 25 as an assistant prior to that. Nice kick, another solid one. Gillum Fields, 20, 25, and that will be the end of that. Tonight's game presented by our friends at Prairie Farms. What makes Prairie Farms milk and dairy products so tasty? 
It's very simple. Quality comes first using milk sourced directly from Indiana Farms. You can be sure that every time you purchase Prairie Farms products, you are helping local farm families. Dedicated farmers, Happy Cows Real Milk, that's been the Prairie Farms way for over 80 years. Prairie Farms is Indiana's farmer-owned dairy. Let's see if you, Indy, can capitalize on the uh, success with the run game here and, and take a play-action shot at some point in this drive. Last two times Buchanan have touched it. They've been for touchdowns. They'll mix it up, throw it to Lee, and Lee, that's his third catch of this game already. And he's been solid every time he's touched it. He picks up eight yards. Again, the, the same concept they've thrown uh, a couple times on first down. They, they run the fade by the outside receiver and the flat route by the inside receiver. And, and right now, and s &T had a little different look there. Uh, the corner came off late to make the tackle versus trailing the fade route up the sideline. Uh, but still, good Good first down game for UND. Conkling now 9 of 14 for 78 yards with an interception. Hand off Buchanan. Buchanan first down. Tripped up at about the 39-yard line. He picks up six. Yeah, you can see him right there at the end of that run. He smacks the ground. Uh, feels like he should have kept his feet and, and had another big, long run. And that's that's one of the things that you notice about Buchanan is, is he gets the big runs in bunches, and it's he expects it to happen. Redshirt sophomore from Aurora, Illinois. That fertile south and west side of Chicago recruiting ground for the UND Greyhounds. Conklin, play fake, looks deep ball, looking for Derrick and it's tipped away. Great recovery. That is Stefan Kaplan that made the right break to prevent what would have been a touchdown. Just, you know, Conkling has overthrown one, and that one is just a, just a touch underthrown. Uh, but obviously, a uh, very nice job with the pass break up there uh, by number nine, uh, Camplin, right? Correct. The second and 10. Four man front for ST. Hand off Buchanan. Buchanan in a bad way. Zigs and zags, and that's a heck of an effort to lose two. Third and 12. So they, they ran the same play that they scored the first touchdown on. And, and this time, uh, I don't know if it was the center, Austin Keel, but they get pressure. Yeah, so right there, Kendall Alexis, they get pressure into his gap that blows everything up. You're trying to get the ball to the edge, the, the right edge, uh, and, and just that A gap got swallowed up by a, a penetrator. Miners show a six man rush. Now they'll drop a linebacker off. They'll bring, in fact, just three. Conkling has time. Now can he find a target? Throws it behind Lee again. Even if he catches it, that's not close to a first down. And credit s &T. After giving up one first down, they stopped the drive. And here comes the punt team on for you, Indy. One. That's what happens sometimes when you try to take that first down play action shot. You, it, right. You, got, you, you have to be able, and, and with a 14-point lead, you have to be okay with punting it. You don't, you don't like it, but you, you got to be okay with it because you took the shot on first down. So Zoller. Shorter kick. And that's a fumble. That's a loose ball. I think s &T is on it. Let's see. Well, at this point, with as many bodies are down there, it's it might change possession a couple of times. Well, given how the Greyhounds are walking off the field, and now we have official confirmation, and that's one of your s &T you simply just got to get away from. Credit the Miners, they were able to hop on it. So, drive for the Miners will start at their own 39-yard line. Tonight's game presented by Gordon Flesh. The Gordon Flesh, business technology managed. Please visit us at gflesh.com. Wendy, last week led 42-10 at halftime. And then saw Quincy get back in it to the point where they had the ball down seven at 45-38. No such offensive fireworks so far tonight. King throws it and incomplete again. There was some contact there, but 
Both receiver and defensive back were looking back towards the ball. They'll let that one go by. Second down. Yeah. You can see right there, you can see Kevonte Houston looking over to the sideline. I, I, I think what they're telling him is he's got to he's got to maintain that top side presence on that corner route. He put himself there. He, he didn't get enough depth, and he put himself in a chase situation. Four-man rush. King slings it and incomplete. Schulte in coverage and could not have timed that hit any better. That one was close. But obviously, I mean, the, the headlines is right there looking right at it. Felt like the timing was, as you said, just perfect. He got there at the same time the ball did. So third down and 10. We documented the Schulte family story last week. The Hillsdale family has turned into a UND family over the last 30 years. Looks like S&T is going to ask for a timeout. Play clock was at four, and they will get the first timeout of the half. Comes with 5.16 left to go here in quarter number two. And so far, total yards for S&T, 64. That number has jumped up for UND up to 145 now after their success over the course of the first two drives of quarter number two. We'll be joined by Jason Wortham, the wrestling coach at UND, coming up at halftime. And we'll also have some previews of the upcoming weekend that will be in the GLBC soccer tournament on both the men's and women's side. Of course, the men's team last year, national semifinalists. They have reached the national semis in the last two years that we have had full postseasons, as in 2019 and 2021. First, we're doing so with a new head coach, with John Higgins, now the head coach at Xavier University. This helped build this UND soccer program. All that more comes your way at halftime. I wouldn't be surprised to see some type of screen here. Well, you've got three receivers lined up near side. That certainly tips the balance of the scales in that direction. King throws. King again overthrew it, and it's intercepted. It's Houston for a second time tonight. He's got a wall of blockers and is tripped up at the 29-yard line. I really think right. the hits that he has taken uh, have taken a toll. I mean, uh, he's winding up there. He doesn't look very balanced. Uh, and just, I mean, that ball wasn't a yard over his receiver. It was 10 yards over his receiver. Let's be blunt. Tonight, the interceptions going both ways in tonight's game have not exactly been because of great defensive breaks on the ball. No, they have not. They've not they been well-thrown passes. They Again, have. going in both directions. Both directions, agreed. So with that, UND has the ball. Again, short field. This time at the S&T 27-yard line. Last time the Hounds had a short field because of a turnover was at the minor 11. Conklin looks, throws, has a man, McNeilis. He bubbled, he recovered, he did not score. He is down inside the one-yard line. That, <laughs> we talked about some not well-thrown balls. That ball. was great. That was a very well-thrown football. That was a pretty small window for Kevin McNeilis uh, and threaded the needle right there. If McNeilis catches that clean, I think he scores. He had a touchdown last week against Quincy. And now he'll resume his more usual blocking role for the former Bishop Chittard Trojan. Well, I think he could almost make an argument that he got that thing across. Handoff goes to Buchanan. Buchanan, and touchdown. Buchanan scores it. He's got his second touchdown of the night. I get his third touchdown of the night. It's hard to keep track when you score so many. 20 nothing. Hounds in front with the extra point pending. That is now seven in the last six quarters. Again, for the man that normally is the understudy, Vittoriano Clinton. Good job taking advantage. Good push 
by the, the s &T defensive line, but as they get that push and they're slanting to the defensive left, Buchanan's able to cut it back to the offensive left and get, get himself into the end zone. Yeah, credit Nick Matley, the linebacker, hit him behind the line of scrimmage, but Buchanan just powered through and obviously did not need much to get into the end zone. So all of a sudden it is 21-0 for the Greyhounds. We reference that these two teams have played each other. This is their 10th meeting in what is the 11th year of the GLVC sponsoring football. Hounds had won the first eight. S&T got UND for the first time last year. They did not play in the COVID-shortened spring season, fall of 20, spring of 2021. There's been a handful of lopsided games and it's a pretty competitive contest between these two teams over the years as well. Right now, the Hounds have built up a three-score lead and I guarantee you the message at halftime will be what happened in the second half of last week's game. The, the proverbial keep your foot on the gas pedal talk will definitely take place in the UND locker room. Ward drills this one, line drive kick, build it up the six yard line. And this time tripped up and around the 27 yard line. Here's the return man and Kai Martin. Tackle for the Greyhounds. Made by San Flowers. Nice job as he came down the field. He maintained his leverage to the outside, but still was able to squeeze the ball carrier and make the tackle. Nice play by Flowers. Satine is trying to find their footing offensively. Again, throws it. Catch is made. Yeah, about two yards shy of a first down. Catch that time for Isaiah Wright. King now 7 of 23. Two interceptions, 83 yards. Yeah, they're... they're they're trying to use this drive here. I mean, obviously they want to score some points, but they're, they're trying to protect him and, and provide a little rhythm as well. King, the senior from Bixby, Oklahoma. And fake the handoff. Quick hitter in the flat. Catch made, first down. That's good one. So the first down for s &T, just their fifth of the contest. A little flat route from the tight end. Brown with the tackle. It's a good one, picks up five. Three turnovers now by s &T. One of those was on Connard, the backup, who was in for one snap after King lost a helmet. King steps up and King is dropped. I believe the broadcast cliche is coverage sack because there was nowhere to go. Give the sack to Justin Thomas, but credit the guys on the back end for the fellas in black tonight. Yeah, that, that was good coverage. And I think, can't quite see it. There was a guy coming, it was gonna come open about the middle of the eye. And I just don't think with a couple, yeah, he was he was gonna protect that football on that, on that particular play. Second and 15. King, and almost picked again. Now a late flag was thrown at the end of the play. So let's see which direction that's going in. This, that would not be a roughing the passer late hit. That would be something of the conversational variety. Let's see which way it's going. I, 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 just watching Jacob Jones' body language, I felt like he might have got caught doing something. So what was going to be third and 15 instead becomes first down now for the Miners at the 50-yard line. I, mean, I never saw anybody kind of go fly. That's why I thought it was more of a talking penalty than anything else. So 
ball at the 50. See if this provides a spark to the visitors. Again, delayed blitz. Throw across the flat, catch made, and this will be just shy of a first down. Schulte on the tackle. That time it is Bryson Burns with the reception for nine yards. Good job there. Hang in. UND brings pressure. Hit your little shallow cross and, and let him run. Burns, a freshman from Clarksville, Tennessee, that makes the grab. Here's this. His first catch of the night. Sixth different receiver to grab a ball for the Miners this evening. Take the handoff. King hit as he throws and incomplete pass. And again, we have whistles at the end of the play and there is a flag behind the play. So a taunting call that goes against UND. And that's 30 yards in penalties after the play is over against the Greyhounds on this drive. I'm going to guess that there might have been some words again. You would think that would be the case. There's a fine line between playing with some some passion and some swagger and, and being intelligent about how you phrase things after a big hit. Again, blitz coming. Again, King just throws it up in the air. There is another flag thrown. That catch, though, is made by ST at the five-yard line. Again, that flag that is thrown appears to be probably something in more of the pass interference variety. And if it's against UND, oh, the play is going to stand. It's going to be first and goal. Grab made by Isaiah Wright. And I just saw a show that the penalty was going to be declined. Yeah, hold against UND. So first and goal for the Miners. And this is really their first. Kind of true look at the end zone in tonight's game. Clock rolls with a minute 40 left to go, and whistles blow. I'm not sure if that's to potentially reset the play clock or. Yep, they're going to put the couple seconds back on the game clock because the receiver got out of bounds. So, in other words, the clock should not start until the ball is snapped. Hence the reason for the pause. Different quarterback is in this time now for s &T. Quarterback keep and UND was sitting on it. That is Sam Simrel. Yeah, trying to use a little wildcat type package there with Simrel. Trying to run the power read play. Nice job by Benjamin Hunnius. Smell it, read it. Make the tackle. Several 10 carries on the season coming into tonight's game. So State and King back in there now. Play clock at four. King again, blitz and just threw that one away. He had the he had the slant. They ran a little. Paul, like say, the inside receiver's running the corner that he throws it over his head, and then the outside receiver comes off the ball and kind of slow walks it and then is going to break hard on the slant. I think he could have tried to drive that slant ball in there. So timeout taken by s &T. again, knowing that they've got to get seven at this stage, trailing 21-0, heading into halftime. So third down and goal at the six-yard line. And s and has one timeout remaining. And what's your play call here for the Miners, Coach? I, I'm, 
I'm going to say they go back with some type of crossing route. Hope they get you Indy and, and man coverage and then run your run your mesh concept over the ball and, and take your best one-on-one -on -one receiver. I'd probably, in the six-yard line, throw him down here to the field and let him have, you know, this whole area to work if you want to run the fade or you wanted to. But I, I would... I would incorporate some type of shallow crosser in the middle. It's going to be hard for him to do, though, out of this formation unless they motion somebody. So three wide and an H back. Cameron Smith, the lone setback. Hound's been aggressive on defense all game. Again, they bring pressure. Throw it. They got him. Touchdown. Touchdown on the slant. Miners on the board. Isaiah Wright. So they use the motion. Nobody follows. Zone coverage. Now he knows once he gets the release, the ball's got to come out of my hand quick. And, and essentially, they I mean, it's a slant, but they threw it so quick. Potential trick play here. Nope. I'll close the door of the swinging gate and line back up in a more usual formation. Parker Boyce. Almost got to it, did you, Indy? But Boyce gets it up and in. And Missouri S&T is on the board with 47 seconds. Let's go before halftime. They credit S&T, they made some plays. You, Indy, gave them 33 yards on that drive as well. It's 21 to seven. Uh, and we talked earlier about part of the focus at, at halftime when the team meets. Penalties are, are definitely going to be something that get discussed. So the Hounds do have all three timeouts at their disposal for head coach Chris Skeeters. See how aggressive they get offensively. Really their key has been points off of turnovers here in this quarter. Greyhounds have taken advantage of three different short fields. Interception returns that led to 11 and 27 yard scoring drives and then a solid punt return by Alonzo Derrick and then a one play scoring drive. 50 and to the house for Jaquan Buchanan. Boyce will boot this ball away for s &T. See if they try to uh, avoid Mr. Gillum. Had a kick return touchdown last week. Right to him. He'll bring this one from the four yard line. And Gillum bounces it outside. Gillum's got a blocker. Gillum trying to figure out which way to cut. Still going. Bounces it outside. 30, 25, 20 yard line. Memo to the rest of the league. Don't kick it to that guy. Hounds have the football at the 20. It's like you've coached or played this game for 30 seconds. You years. know. I, I don't know, I, maybe they thought they could kick it into the end zone, but that little guy right there, he gets loose in the open field and it's, it's fun to watch. He went 88 yards to the end zone last week. That return, good for 75. Hounds have all three timeouts here. So, I, playbook's open, they don't have to throw the ball They've got 33 seconds here. They can they can they can run the football because they can kill the clock with the timeout. And the entirety of the field is open to them as well. And now, Hounds not get the playoff in time. So they'll add a five-yard degree of difficulty. Will you, Indy? So that's, first and 15. That's. Those are the penalties that you don't right. Coaches put that one on us because we didn't get it to get the play call and get them out there to the field fast enough. Delayed blitz, Conkling throws, finds his man. That's Ransom. Ransom breaks a couple of tacklers miss. Well done. That looked like that play was going for a bunch of not much when he gets to the eight yard line. Just, uh, just they, they missed him. <laughs> I mean, he had two guys that had pretty clean shots on him. 
Conkling takes what they give him, throws a little short. It's an 18-yard pickup. He's trying to punch the ball out. And now s &T has to call the timeout because they had 12 on the field. They're showing you the guy off the field, so they will now take their final timeout. And again, as you pointed out, run the ball here. You have three timeouts if you're U Indy. Well, and, or you can put yourself in a position where s &T, just like s &T took advantage with the little return motion to see what coverage U Indy's playing, U Indy can turn around and do the same thing right here. And if they see that they've got him in man, now you go to, to some type of crossing route play where you might pick a guy off and have a guy wide open in the end zone. Atmosphere always electric here at UND. You and I were talking about, you and I have been doing these games for 10, 12, 15 years. That coincides with going to primarily night games on the season finale against Truman because of the time of year is a two o'clock matinee. On over the 12th in football, now the last 10 plus years has been an event on this campus. Yeah. Matt Donovan, uh, Greyhound Club, and then, uh, you know, just the entire staff does a great job. There we go. Speaking of events, after four touchdowns last week, how about four and a half? Buchanan from 10 yards out. And it's 27-7, UND. The same play scored on the last time. Guard, or the, the long run, the 50-yard run. It's the guard and the H counter. Kick out flies. Kick out blocked by Zach Clark. 86, Kevin McNeilis leads him up through there. Uh, and all he's got to do is get himself to the pylon. In the first quarter, UND had three yards rushing. They've had more in the second quarter. Kick is up and good. Seymour, the freshman from Twin Lakes, four for four on extra points. And when it looked like ST had wrestled some momentum going to the break, Special teams delivers again for UND. Great return there by Marquez Gillum. And the Hounds are able to take advantage of the great return and punch it into the end zone. You don't think GLVC teams are asking for Toronto Clinton to come back, do you? Because the guy well, behind him seems to be pretty good too. Yeah, well, and that's a pretty good job recruiting. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and development, obviously, you know, and, and part of that goes uh, to the weight room. I mean, you, you take a look. They show those close-up shots of, of both Toriano Clinton and Jaquan Buchanan. You yeah, got two guys that are. Tor Tori hasn't missed a day. So we see him without the pads the last couple of weeks. He's not been, he's not been, even though he's missed the last couple of games, he's not been skipping the weight he, room these last couple of weeks. He's made the workouts, yeah. most, yeah. most assuredly. And again, we have talked about this, that there has been a litany of NFL teams that have come through this campus over the course of the last few weeks, and largely it's because of the guy wearing number eight. I do think he'll be a draft pick next year, I really do. Probably, maybe a, th a third day sort of pick, but that's still amongst the top 260 players in a given college football season. But he has that level of potential. But at the same time, you can we didn't really see play much the last year and a half. He was very good in the spring of 2021. Ward hits a line drive for 60 yards. And this into the pile. And again, s &T does not have a timeout, so not sure how aggressive they will be. Maybe it's one run A play and see what you can have. Maybe give yourself a shot at the end zone or simply run the ball and go to the house down by three scores. I think with the pressure UND has been able to put on the quarterback that in my mind, they're going to take a knee right here. Satan King has taken some pops nope. so far in this game. He's 11 for 29, two touchdowns, one interception. It's a handoff. Hounds had it covered. That's a yard, and that'll be that. So at halftime, you win the 28-7. Again, last week they led by 32. It got down to seven in the fourth quarter. We'll see if a lesson has been learned coming up some 20 plus minutes from now. Chris Schemer's team, a three touchdown lead. Wrestling head coach Jason Wortham joins us next. So you're watching Greyhound Football on the ISC Sports Network. 
Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point, her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 1.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Back in my day, the entertainment at the football games was Uncle Larry playing his banjo in the back of the van. Go Hound! Back at Key Stadium, Kiesel Field at Key Stadium to be precise. 28-7, UIndy leads Missouri S&T. Greg Regstraw, Dave Burton. But we are thrilled to be joined as we always have halftime guests as we go talk show mode during a 25-minute halftime. The wrestling coach at the University of Indianapolis and Jason Worthen, kind enough to join us. Coach, it is always good to see you. And uh, kind of walk us through exactly where you are from a workout, practice, and, and upcoming match standpoint. How far away is it until the season really gets going for you? It's here. <laughs> it's here. Um, we started official practice uh, about the middle of October. Been hit, hitting it pretty hard. Uh, we have our first competition uh, next Saturday, so we're a week away. You guys have potentially as long of a season as any sport because you are wrestling into February. If your guys are, are doing your jobs from a national perspective, how do you kind of maintain that high level from – early November all the way through February. Yeah, it's actually Mar March, yeah. you know, second weekend of March. So, um, yeah, I, it, we kind of look at it as, as two seasons uh, in, in, in some way. Um, you know, when the when our guys get on campus, we, we hit the ground running. We're doing some preseason stuff and getting them in shape and getting our hands on them. And, um, you know, first semester is a lot of opens. It's figuring out our best lineup. It's playing around with, with lineups, moving guys around, getting young guys experience. And then we go into the break. We got our, our moratorium uh, about seven days off. Uh, second semester starts with a bang. Um, we got national duels that, that we've been a part of the last couple of years. And uh, second semester is more of um, conference duels. Uh, like I said, you start with national duels and then you kind of settle into uh, some singular duels and some multi-duels on the weekend. And um, at, at that point, we expect to know who our guys are and uh, kind of ironing out some things then to hit the regional and national tournament is in, in the best shape we can be in. And did I see that you are picked to win the GLVC this year, rated number one going into the season? We are. Uh, we're one, and I expect uh, McKendry will be right on our heels. I know the GLVC has been sponsoring wrestling maybe half a dozen years, maybe a little bit more at this point. Tell me about the strength of, of the GLVC from a wrestling standpoint. Yeah, I, you know, there's some pretty established teams. Uh, McKendry's got the better of us the last, uh, well, since the it's been a, been a thing in the GLVC. So uh, McKendry, Maryville, uh, very strong, uh, have strong traditions. Uh, they'll be reloaded. Um, and so we, we have really tough duels with them. Um, and then, you know, fortunately, uh, Drury, William Jewell, Quincy, um, teams like that have started programs since since I've been coaching and since 
2009-2010 season. So wrestling is growing at our level, and, and we're fortunate that the GLVC has, has grown as well. Well, frankly, that's wonderful to hear just because I know that for many years, not the interest, not the talent level, but simply the number of schools that were sponsoring programs were starting to decline. It's great to hear at this level it's going back up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I've been fortunate to be part of leadership groups and um, sit with other coaches and brainstorm. And what, what you're seeing now is schools, small schools, private schools, adding wrestling because it, it's, you know, it, it, I, I believe the latest uh, uh, numbers are the sixth most popular sport in high school and about three percent of high school kids go on to wrestle in college so colleges are looking at it as a as a, a way to bring kids to campus and, and and improve their numbers and let's face it people i think out, outside of indiana I mean, probably many people inside of indiana don't realize how great of a wrestling state this is and i am fortunate enough that i get to be a part of the coverage of the ihsaa wrestling state finals every year and there's always a kid or two that I talk to uh, that are wrestling in a championship match that will wrestle right here at the University of Indianapolis. Tell me about your incoming recruiting class. Yeah, so we have a, a large class. Um, I, I think that the numbers are 17. Um, we have uh, some kids in the in Indianapolis area, so I'm sure you will be familiar with them. You know, uh, Nathan Smith from Southport, he is a, a national champion. Um, he was second at the prestigious Fargo tournament, which is a, a freestyle event. He won a preseason uh, national title in, in folk style to start his off his senior year last year. Uh, unfortunately, he's a little undersized. He was a 106 pounder, so he's <laughs> uh, he's actually up to about 130. Um, so he's he's been putting on some weight and working hard in the weight room. Uh, Gavin Garcia is an, another uh, Indianapolis area um, talent. He was uh, at Brownsburg a couple times, state placer. He's been impressive in the room. Aiden Sprague was a, a three-time state placer out of East Noble. Um, he's been very impressive. He's probably going to push for a start at 125. Um, another area kid, Jacob Johnson from Franklin Community, is um, a heavyweight. And um, he's he's got glimpses of... Dylan Falkenberg. Uh, That's a high is, bar. <laughs> it is. It is. He is uh, explosive, a little undersized, um, and, and deceivingly athletic. So those those are kind of some of the freshmen that have, have stood out up to this point. Now, on the flip side, again, because of COVID, you've got some fifth and maybe even some sixth-year guys in we the do. program. Tell me about your senior leaders. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's funny because we've had some, some kids on campus um, that we're recruiting, and they, they – they look at our team and think that they're old. You know, Braden Bailey, uh, we have a recruit here tonight, and he said, well, I remember watching Braden Bailey when I was in, like, fifth and sixth grade <laughs> at the state tournament, you know. And so he's actually in his sixth year. Um, and so he's uh, he, he's fun to watch. We're hoping to keep him healthy. And um, so he, he'll be – we're kind of unsure if he'll be at 133 or 141. But um, he's, he's getting back from a, a back injury and um, – you know, <laughs> you don't see very many, I don't know, mid-20-year-olds wrestling in, in college, and we, we have one with, with Braden, so he's he's a little bit of a grandpa. Um, Jack Idle George is in his fifth year. Yep. Dawson Combes, uh, three-time All-American. He actually, Jack and Dawson have another year if they so choose to use it. Um, most likely Jack will be done after this year, his fifth year in, in Dawson. Um, is entertaining the, the idea of coming back after next year. So, uh, you know, those three guys, uh, we got Chase Wilkerson that's a, a senior, um, and really uh, Derek Blueball, who is, is ranked number two right now, is at, at the um, was runner-up last year at the national tournament. He's really stepped up and been uh, more vocal and, and really the, the leader of this team. I know you guys sometimes host multiple matches. The Greyhound Classic is always a high point of your schedule. When can fans see you uh, at uh, Nickerson Hall, at Ruth Lilly Fitness Center, Sue Willie Court? When can fans catch you here on campus? Gosh, you know, um, it, this year is kind of funky a little bit because the last couple years we've had the um, the honor, the, the flexibility to host. You know, some of these schools have not had the ability sure. to do that. And so, uh, unfortunately, we owe – some of our our competitors uh, away duels yep and so uh we lost a couple duels um 
usually we have five, six home home events. Um, this year we have three, so it's it's uh, th that's a little disappointing. But um, our first home action, we're actually going to have a uh, inner squad in t in two weeks. So we're going to open up and go to a, a an open tournament next Saturday. The following Saturday, which I believe is the twelfth, correct? Um, we are going to host uh, an inner squad and and. Um, just because we're we're lacking home home events, um, and then to end first semester, we'll have the Midwest Classic on. I believe that's December seventeenth and eighteenth, that Saturday and Sunday yep. to end our first semester of wrestling. And then and then lastly, we have a uh, a home duel against Quincy. They just started a, a pro uh, wrestling program this year, and then um, we have the Greyhound Open and the Greyhound Duels. Uh, in the middle of February, so. Very cool, athletics.unu.edu. Jason, it's always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you. And best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. And Jason Worth, a wrestling coach at UND Happen, kind enough to join us. We'll take this quick time out. Dave Burton rejoins after that. We've got stats, highlights, and analysis from half number one. Greyhounds lead Missouri S&T 28 to seven as you're watching on ISC. This global pandemic has challenged us all no one is immune to the profound effect that it has had on our lives and our livelihoods. This pandemic has brought many things into a clearer focus. We thrive best when in community. We treasure our freedom. We have much more that we want to see and do. There's still so much more left to experience together. At Free Enterprise, when challenges come, we meet them with new resolve, and Nandard Cleaning and Sanitary Practices, we've implemented extra precautionary measures, including a new monofoil electrostatic spraying system. This same system is used in hospitals and by legacy brands like Disney. Rest assured that at Free Enterprise, we always take great pride in going above and beyond to provide you and your group with the best care and service possible. We're excited to get our wheels turning and your group moving. Reach out to our free enterprise team and book your group's charter today. Travel free enterprise, because anything else is just a bus ride. Listen, do you hear that? I get here early so I can enjoy some peace and tranquility, but not anymore. Before very long, there'll be a bunch of families here and it'll be a bunch of rugrats running around, ruining what used to be a wonderful, quiet place. But oh no, the Hound Pound Nation will be here. They'll be raising havoc. This place will be bedlam before very long. I wanted to enjoy myself and have a great, peaceful moment before this game starts. But you know what? It's really worth it. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Now get financing as low as 3.99% APR on a new or used vehicle. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Portillo's is unbelievably excited to serve their famous Chicago-style street food in Indianapolis on US 31, just south of Stop 11 Road. We are looking for top dogs to get paid daily, have a flexible work schedule, and we'll get free shift meals. Apply at portillos.com slash careers. Back at halftime here on the south side of Indianapolis, it was nothing, nothing in the first 19 minutes. Five touchdowns have been scored in the last 11, and four of them for the home team, and one of those by UIndy happened in the final 30 seconds of the half, 28-7, Greyhounds in front. Greg Rakestraw, Dave Burton with you on ISC, the GLVC Sports Network, and Comcast 81. Our halftime show, a service of the Ray Skillman Automotive Group. Before we get into the stats, highlights, etc., Dave, your thoughts on half number one. Well, obviously, both teams started slowly offensively. Um, UND was able to take advantage of a couple short fields, uh, when their defense presented uh, turnovers to get the 14-0 lead. Stepped up that defensive intensity even more, forced another interception. 
We got a nice punt return that led to a 50 yard touchdown run. Uh, and, and then, you know, before Marquez Gillum's long kick return, UND gave him 30 yards in penalties. Yeah, you're doing a great job of pressuring the quarterback and knocking him down. Let your play talk, not your mouth. Let's get to the halftime stats, and we'll, I'll go back to the point that you just made, which is very well said. The free enterprise system brings us our halftime stats, and, and let me add those numbers and throw in total plays on there as well. So UND has 28 points. They have 198 yards of offense. You can say that's efficient. They have 28 points on 33 plays. Now, again, it's hidden yards that Dave has alluded to. The scoring drives for UND, I want to say 11, 21, 27, and 50. And again, 11 and 27 were after interceptions. 21 and 50 were after punt returns and kick returns. So the offense has been solid, but it's been defense and special teams that have really led to 28 points. And the defense obviously shines through on the stat that we have right there. Um, usually it's a couple of months before we see 15 below on a graphic. Minus 15 yards again, sack yards included there as well, but the defense has been aggressive and the defense has been good for the Greyhounds. Uh, it's been outstanding, but you, you could just see, uh, you know, in, in s and last drive, you could see the, the color in Coach Kiever's from the, from the neck up with those two penalties sure because those are 30 yards that we don't we don't need to hand them you know and so for all the the good things the defense did unfortunately they're they probably spent a majority of the halftime listening to how they should play more efficiently in the second half it's a perfect scenario for a coach you're up by 21 you got something to get in your team about to get yeah. their attention again especially knowing that you saw a 32 point halftime lead last week get whittled down to seven within about 25 minutes. So again, they, he will have their attention coming up at halftime. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe and agree with that. And I think we'll see the, the offense come out and put together their best drive of the game to start the second half. With that, let's get to our halftime highlights. They are presented by houndgear.com. And again, the highlights in the first quarter were exclusively almost all defense and pressure was a constant from the UND front seven in this first half. And the you know with two interceptions we see there and, and there's not white shirts around as UND's making the interception. Jaquan Buchanan again he would score his first touchdown run from 10 yards out. He would score his next touchdown run from 50 yards out. There are two more touchdown runs you will see from Buchanan. Four and a half. It's the first time that a Greyhound running back has had four touchdowns in a game in 21. Days. Toriano Clinton had it against McKendry on October the 8th. However, the record for touchdowns in a game by a running back is five. That is Andrew Walker who set that seven years ago in a game against William Jewell. Well, and Buchanan had four last week, but one, one of receiving. them was receiving Correct. when he slipped out of the backfield uh, and, and Christian Cockland was able to find him in the left flat. But who knows what will happen here in half number two. All right, so, again, those are our very well-crafted halftime highlights. Final thing before we exit stage left, it's time for coaches' corrections. Those are presented by Gordon Flesh. So, again, we've talked about what UND wants to do, and that is penalty-free on defense, not giving away yards. Offensively, hey, for the, for the things that we're smiling about with UND, that stat did say three turnovers in the first half as well, so that has to change. Let's flip it now. If you're S&T, what can you do on both sides of the ball to stay in this football game? Number one, you got to protect the passer. Yep. Number two, you've got to have success on first down defensively and put UND in a position where they've got to throw it and you can kind of pin your ears back and get after Christian Conkling. Um, you know, I, I've had the luxury as you're doing interviews to be able to, to get out and walk around a little bit and, and you know, where I'm walking around, I'm hearing s and coaches talk, you know, I think defensively, you know, they recognize that like we did, UND scored two touchdowns on the same play where they're the guard H counter play. And he said, we're getting, and I heard the, off, the defensive line coach say, we're having trouble with that because our linebackers aren't reading the puller and fitting in their gap. So I think they're gonna, you know, get after it on first down try to put UND in a passing situation, but one of the ways they're going to do that is trying to get that linebacker play to be more consistent on the gap scheme. 
Now, every weekend is a busy one this time of year here at Key Stadium. Of course, this facility is shared by the football and the soccer teams. The lacrosse teams, of course, call this place home, not to mention track and field coming up in the spring. Well, we have hit the postseason as far as the conference tournament is concerned, and both the Greyhound men and women have upcoming quarterfinal action. Here's a preview. The conference is very, very even right now, though. There's a lot of parity in the conference, and that made it exciting. Going into the last weekend, you had 11 teams that still had a chance to be in the tournament. You had uh, six teams that still had a chance to host a game. So going into it, it, it was exciting because of the parity. That being said, I think we're as good or not better than anybody in the conference. It's a very competitive conference, as you know. Um, the top four or five teams in our conference are all in the region right now. Um, they're all looking to make a run to the national tournament, and that's very realistic for all, a lot of teams in our conference. So the GLP tournament is that's where it's at, and it's very competitive. At the end of the day, that's always going to be the expectation here, is that we, we compete for a conference championship. We're nationally relative. Uh, we're good enough to do it. Now, guys have to come out. They have to work hard. They have to execute. They have to compete. They have to, they have to do the little things because at the end of the day, this conference has never been easy. The expectation is to win, win it all. I mean, that is the standard of UND, and that's why a lot of the, a lot of the guys come here to play. So that is the expectation. Rockhurst this Sunday, 2.30 uh, p.m. here at home. Uh, a really good team. It's going to be a great game. Would love to get the fans out. Love to have a huge crowd supporting the Hounds. You know, it, it's always fun to continue playing on in your season. You're not guaranteed tournament play. So it was a, a great accomplishment by the ladies. Um, we actually just spoke about it's, it's almost like a new season, right? It's, you've done enough to make it to the tournament. Now, each game matters, you know. You can go on and, and win a championship. You could potentially get knocked out the first round. So nothing's given to you now. Um, so I feel like the whole season's kind of in preparation for that. We kind of like talked about it at the beginning of season and then um, I feel like we've kind of held them to a good standard to where they know what to expect. We've played these teams before so I think we're kind of just excited. I'm really excited overall. I think we have a great team this year and I think we all have the same goal of wanting to start a winning streak and like get our season moving forward, postseason moving forward and I think we have a really good vibes going in to these next couple games so it should be good. Yeah, uh, energy's been good. Um, we came off of a, a, a tough weekend, um, but I think the ladies have approached the, the new lease of a, a new season in an awesome way. Um, really been focused in preparation for McKendry. I mean, we have to be. They're a really good side, um, unbeaten this season. So it's been, it's been good so far. Yeah, um, again, the Kendry are a great side. They're organised, they battle. Tim does a great job with, with his team. Um, but like you said, uh, they're, they're not unbeatable. Um, we've got to go in with a good pl game plan. We've got to execute our game plan. We've got to compete for 90 minutes. That's what it's going to take to, to beat a tough McKendry team. But earlier on, earlier on in season, that's what we did. We managed to, to get a tie out of them. Um, I think we could have maybe t walked away with, with more points. Uh, and they're coming off of a tough weekend they almost took a loss at the end of season against Umpsall so uh, right there and then if we go in we compete we execute anything can happen. Race Gum and Buick GMC truck was just awarded GMC dealer of the year come see why and drive away in a new Buick Encore for just $129 a month lease a new GMC terrain for only $229 a month or get a third row Acadia for as little as $229 a month. Get your next SUV from the GMC Dealer of the Year, Ray Skillman Buick GMC Truck. Two great locations, US 31 South or I-465 and East Washington Street or RaySkillmanCars.com. Well, thank our tremendous ISC Sports Network crew. Thank you to Jordan Shu, Vincent Morellez, Alan Hughes, Dennis Glover, Eric Kinnett, Rob Lynch, and the rest of the gang that is putting together tonight's broadcast on the ISC Sports Network, the GLVC Sports Network, and Comcast 81. And our cameras will be back here in two weeks for the regular season finale between Truman and UND. That is a 2 o'clock start. Matt Holmes will join Dave Burton on the call of that game. That game will be just on ISC 
and GLVC Sports Network. No Comcast 81 for that one. There is a chance we could have the Hounds one more time after that. Frankly, as the home broadcasters, we don't want that to be the case. We want to see them in the Division II playoffs. But we at ISC, we are producing for a third time it's been played. The America's Crossroads Bowl up in Hobart, which will feature the best team from the GMAC that does not make the Division II playoffs versus the best team in the GLVC that does not make the playoffs. Last year, that was Truman versus Hillsdale. We'll have that game December the 3rd, again on ISC and Comcast 81. And the GLVC Sports Network will cover it too. As predicted, a pop-up kick. Rodimus will field at the 27-yard line, and Marquez Gillen will not have a chance to match his return exploits from the closing stages of the last half. Yep. And solid starting position here for you, Indy. And let's see if they can get something going offensively here and, and, and put together a, a seven to 10 play drive that results in points. By the way, our crew has been feverishly researching the stat that I gave in terms of Andrew Walker having a five touchdown game as a rushing back, running back. Kenny Gillum had one as well in the old days of UND football. When the Greyhounds would play Valparaiso on a regular basis, that ended in about 1993. But Kenny had a five touchdown performance against the Crusaders back in 1986. Those are the two that we know of, and those stats are pretty accurately maintained from 1983 on. So twice in the last 40 years, Habak has had five rushing touchdowns in a game. Jaquan Buchanan is one away. So ball at the 33-yard line. Must have been a five-yard penalty against s &T that was tacked on there. Conklin rolls right side, throws, has Gillum, and Gillum makes the play. Forget the kick return. He'll simply have the standard offensive touchdown. The second one-play scoring drive of the night. This one from 67 yards, 34-7 UND. He's just running from the slot. He's running a deep post route. <clears throat> and, and you see they, they, they just lose him. And, and he gets across the field and deep and then just outruns everybody. Gillum had four catches for 72 yards on the season. Coming in, he has upped that average. That is his first receiving touchdown for the freshman from Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Make it 34-7. Snap back, Seymour's kick is up and good. Let's take this quick timeout. We're nine seconds in. The lead has grown to four scores for the Greyhounds as you're watching on the ISC Sports Network. Back in my day, it was about family here at the University of Indianapolis. And you know what? It still is. Go Hounds! So back at Key Stadium, they have not been long sustained drives for Union tonight. It has been quick, explosive bursts. 35-7, Hounds in front looking to run their record to 4-0 in league play. Setting up that winner-take-all game with Truman in a couple of weeks. Kick fielded, seven yard lot. To the 20, to the 25, now to the 30. Kicker will come over and cut the angle. Ward makes the tackle on Martin, but not before Martin takes it to the 50-yard line. And there's some bounce on the sidelines. That's not directed to be uh, derogatory towards the S&T return man. That's given the kicker his props for making the tackle. Yeah, I'm, glad we, I'm glad we had kicker cam lined up for that play. That, and, and that was good angle, and, and he was getting in there and getting some of that. That was a for the brand moment right there for That's Pat kickers McAfee. across Central Indiana. Pat McAfee, proud of that one for certain. But s &T has the ball at the 50-yard line. And they are going to go with Connard as the quarterback. 
So after Staten King had a rough first half, Connard had one passing attempt, but he came in when King lost his helmet and he threw an interception. So Connor now gonna get the nod here to start this half. And, and you know, honestly, the, the long return does some things. If, if you're back at, at the 25 yard line right there, down four scores after the long touchdown by Gillum, now this gets, I mean, UND starts pinning their ears back and coming after the quarterback even more. And Connor has had some snaps this year, throwing the ball down the sideline, tipped away. Great timing by Brandon Thomas to knock that ball free. It's third and seven. Let's, let me give you Connor's numbers on the year. He has now played in five of their nine games on the season. He is 28 of 55, four picks, two touchdowns, 324 yards. Yeah, and, and you know, he, he's a junior. Uh, Excuse me, King is, is a senior, so you know it's obviously they've you know spent time in spring ball and, and probably gone back and forth at different times. So just trying to see if they can you know change what's going on with the change of personnel. It's a handoff, and that's a first down, and it could be more. Tackled inside of the 25-yard line, and again, frankly, S and T has barely attempted to run the ball tonight. That is Smith, who will take it down to about the 22-yard line. Yeah, it, it just run a little zone play, a zone play to the left, and, and whether he, I, I wasn't paying, I didn't catch a, a linebacker stunt, but obviously they caught UND's defense slanting one way or expecting a different play, and Smith is out the, the front side of that for a long game. And that puts the s &T rushing yards in positive territory for the first time in some time. Fake the handoff on the RPO, the throw is high. Houston was in coverage for you, Indy. Intended target on the play was Isaiah Wright. Yeah, and, and, and that was honestly poor execution on the play. They just hit the inside zone, so they go back to give the same action. And they're trying to make you, Indy, defend sideline to sideline by throwing the, the bubble screen out there, and he just threw it high. And the two quarterbacks combined, 11 of 32. Three interceptions and a touchdown, 123 yards. Fake the handoff, quarterback on the keeper, trying to get to the outside and says, nope, not going to happen. Loss on the play of you know, about eight yards, third down. I'm not sure what he exactly, they were, they were running orbit motion over the top to the left. I, I would have thought that the play. Was the, that perhaps a busted play you're saying? I, I, I think the quarterback opened the wrong way. Or, and, and this happens, I've done it. The direction of the zone got miscalled and it didn't match the motion. Third and 18. Connick looks. Throws the deep ball, and it's going to be a flag. Again, because Mavungu did not turn around, kind of went through the receiver. That'll be 15 yards and an s &T first down. And, and so this, this is UND's technique. They, when they're, they're playing the fade ball, they're, they're in a chase technique, and then they're trying to play the hands. The problem with that is this. The ball's underthrown. Right. You don't know that it's underthrown. You can't play the ball through the receiver's hands up high. He jumps like that. Mavungu, you know, makes contact, and it's it's a 15-yard penalty. So first and ten for the 15-yard line for S and T. S and T's touchdown came in the closing minute of half number one. Handoff goes to Smith. Just kind of zigs and zags his way forward for five yards. But Smith now seven carries for 42 yards tonight. If they get points on this drive, that will be 45 yards in penalties that have aided their scoring drive. Absolutely. That one you kind of understand. That The first two were rather nonsensical by you, Indy. That's just right, playing that, the game. Yeah, agree. Second down. 
Again, the handoff, and Smith going to be awfully close. Should be third down. I don't think a short field goal does you much good here if you're S&T, so you would assume you've got a couple of downs to pick up a couple of yards here if needed. Smith coming in this season, 598 yards rushing. The redshirt freshman from Delaware. This is some serious, expansive recruiting territory that the Miners have put together. And I'm guessing a, a decent portion of it is what they offer. Hand off Smith. Smith upended, but not before he has the first down. Brown on the tackle. Yeah, really nice tackle there by Michael Brown. That'll be first and goal at the one-yard line. But they, you know, they're getting something working up front here on this drive. Well, again, they really, frankly, didn't try to run the ball that much in the first half. So first and goal. Smith, not that time. Going to lose a yard on the play. Aaron Barnett amongst those in on the tackle for the Greyhounds. Second and goal. Yeah, Barnett did a nice job uh, slanting from his defensive end and also uh, Schulte, nice job off the edge as well. So there, right there you see they get the little zone action and Schulte and Barnett both read it perfectly, close and allow no gain. The second and goal. Hounds linebackers again walking up. Again the handoff and now with a lot less ground to cover, it's a much easier run support play for the backers. And after a loss of one, then a loss of two, and it's third and goal from the four-yard line. Yeah, you got a good look right there. Number 99, Michael Dennison. Number 92, Dylan Shelton. They, they just absolutely dominated right there in the center of the line. Look at, oh, great job. Great camera work right there. Shelton, 268, Dennison. 273, the beef up front for you, Indy. Shotgun snap. Looking for the fade in the end zone, but it's well wide. All right, so now you. Looks like they're going to go ahead and take the points. Field goal unit's coming up. I kind of expected a what might have been at the top of their two-point play list. Right. Want to get some points to reward the drive. Apparently is the philosophy. So the chip shot field goal try. Boyce, 21 yards out. Blocked, it's blocked. No points on the drive whatsoever. Schulte on the tackle. I think Mike Brown got to it. I almost said they got really close on the yes, extra point. Yes, they did. As you were saying chip shot, and I thought, nah, that would sound silly. Take a look. It was Brandon Thomas. Yeah, Brandon Thomas, Thomas off the edge, but also nice job by Dylan Shelton in the interior, sure. getting himself through uh, the, the gap there. But that, that was great timing by Brandon Thomas off the edge. Big stop there by the special teams. What a night for special teams. Derek gives you a punt return to the 50. Gillum gives you a 75-yard kickoff return, and now you get a black kick. But the offense is going to go five yards backwards here. Is, looks like a little movement. Are yeah. they going to say the center? Yeah, I think he picked the ball up. And the center is being claimed that Austin Keel moved the ball. First and 15. You want to be picky if you're Coach Keevers. It's, it's penalties that will, penalties and first half turnovers that will drive you nuts. Then again, look at the scoreboard and then it's all smiles. Handoff goes to Bennett and Bennett powers off of 
Left tackle and picks up a couple. And at 35-7, you almost wonder how much will you see of Buchanan the rest of the way. And, you know, there are, I, let's see how this drive goes. I would expect to see him in this drive, especially let's say Lenny you know, pops a 15-yard run or a 20-yard run. That was technically Bennett's first carry of the night. Take the handoff to Bennett. Conklin wants the deep ball and almost intercepted. Again, he's locking it on a receiver and not kind of reading the, the, the backer that's dropping in support coverage, and it's third down. That was, they, you know, that was an interesting place at second and 12 to take the double move shot. And then, I mean, that one, if, if you're going to make that throw, you know, 15 yards down the field, you, you got to be able to step right into it and, and cut it loose. And he's got the, the pressure in his face. That's one you just throw away. That was Retzloff. Handoff goes to Buchanan. Buchanan comes out of there with it, but was tripped up from behind. Look for a moment like he might be able to pick it up, but that was Stratman that made the tackle. Buchanan does pick up six or seven yards, but here comes the punt team on for you, Indy. Good, good run right there, you know. Kind of wondering, you know, maybe they thought they'd catch him sleeping on second and 12. They, you know, expect that play on second and 12, so take the shot on second and 12. Zoller. Gets rid of it. Great punt. Sanders. Watch it kick up for a few yards, but still well done by Zoller. Well, I, I thought that one was going to take Me off too. and go. <laughs> I thought it was going to go the opposite direction. It did not, but you'll still take it if you're you, Indy. Let's thank our friends at Prairie Farms. If you tried a Prairie Farms milk snack, delicious chocolate cake bars filled with real milk, cream, and covered in chocolate. They're made with no preservatives or artificial colors, perfect as an anytime, anywhere snack. Find them in the dairy section. Visit their website, prairiefarms.com slash milk snacks, under to win a free four-pack. Dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk. That's been the Prairie Farms way for over 80 years. Prairie Farms is Indiana's farmer-owned dairy. Handoff. Thomas collapses down, and it's a gain of only a yard. So encountered out there for a second drive for s and s and with two games left to go. Actually, just one. They're off next week. So s and much like UND, will play 10 regular season games. They're off next week, and then it's Southwest Baptist at home to wrap up the season. Connor throws, catch made, hit made simultaneously. Forward progress to the 42-yard line. Paying the price to make that play was Isaiah Wright. Yeah. They, oh, now cool. they're going to go a little quick here. Allen's gets set, third down and two. On the handoff, it's Sanders and Honeyus cleans him up. Fourth and two. So they go quick and they're unbalanced this way. They have a tight end and three receivers, and then they ran it to the weak side. Looks like the punt team will come on here for the Miners. And that bye week in s and schedule, that would be when Lindenwood made the decision in late spring to jump to the OVC. The Hounds, in one sense, were lucky that they found a team to play in Saginaw Valley. You could say they were unlucky in the fact that Saginaw Valley handed them their lunch a couple of weeks ago. Another outstanding kick, and that'll be a fair catch made on, out of bounds and about the 14-yard line is where this drive will start for you, Indy. I Let's think thank our friends at IMCU, proud to support the University of Indianapolis and offer a free UND debit card with a free checking account and e-statements. Get your UND debit card today and show your school spirit. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online now at imcu.com. Membership savings required, federally insured by the NCUA. I'm sorry I, I cut you off, partner, to get us paid. My apologies. Yeah, I completely understood. 
Uh, no, I'm just, I want to check the punting stats here because I think we're probably looking at an all-conference punter. Uh, I, pretty impressive. Net average, 38.2. Conklin just throws this one away. That'll be out of bounds. Lee was in the area, but I was simply recognizing the defensive line got the better of that battle. Live to fight another day at second down. Yeah, and one of the coaching points they may make with uh, with Connor there is throw that thing to the short side of the field. It's going to be get out of bounds uh, a lot quicker. And Buchanan's in for this series. He had the last carry in the previous series. And the two teams have exchanged punts in short order. Hand off Buchanan. Bounces this one outside. Again, good run support. Flag is thrown, and you think that's probably a hold against you, Indy, but I'm not sure that second and 15 is better than third and nine. It's kind of what you, Indy, is looking at. Yeah, so, yeah. I, ba I think the referee basically signaled for the penalty to be accepted before he even kind of looked towards the sideline. So let's see. Uh, what the folks at S&T are thinking here. The conversation is now still ongoing about that. Dan will decline it. And great job by Dennis Glover to give you that angle from behind the end zone. They're all 22 shot that we're able to have with the lift that's in place behind the Greyhound Club section, the Bless Express here in the north end of Key Stadium. That's a little bit of a time consideration penalty as well. That's sure, absolutely. One less down to take time off the clock when you're down by four scores. Uh, we're going to. Miners bring four. Conklin throws, and Derek was the intended target. And that ball actually hit the umpire? <sighs> yeah, I, I think. I don't think Alonzo Derrick expected the ball when it was thrown, I I, which I don't understand. He's 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 got a, a defender chasing him. It's the exact reason you put him in that position and cross the field against, you know, a, a cover two zone with man to man underneath. Get your speed guy running across the field, get him the ball and let him run. Zoller did not hit that one well. He's been having to punt on the move the entire game. And that time, moving caused to hit that ball off the side of his foot. And really, for the first time tonight, now S&T gets the benefit of a short field. They will take over at the UND 33-yard line. Coach Keever's down there having a chat. Unfortunately for Mr. Zoller, Way, way back, Coach Keevers was the special teams coordinator, and we had a chat similar to that, and I ended the game with my helmet taken away because I told him I kicked the one in the middle. While an accurate statement, probably not the thing to say in that scenario. Well, it was, I just had my head bounce off the turf and didn't really... Such was have your, a, I didn't have much of a filter. Such was your days <laughs> helping build the program in the early days of the Joe Polizzi era, back in the late 90s. My partner's senior year, the Hounds won four games, and that was the most they had won in some time. And the next year, the Hounds started 6-0 and and then went 8-1 and and finished 8-3. and and The next year, they went 8-2. and So Dave's part of that uh, foundation that was laid back in the mid-90s. <sighs> Second and 10. Counted on the handoff up the middle and for Uindy, Borski, Jones combined to limit the damage on the Kai Martin run to a yard. Third down and nine. Big down right here for the UND defense. Uh, you know, obviously score being what it is and position on the field, uh, Missouri s and is, is Got two plays here to get nine yards, but this is a big down for UND. Hand off, and UND was sitting on it. 
Well, there was a third down and seven conversion a drive or two ago that was on a run of similar ilk, and Uindy was waiting on it that time. Loss of four, fourth down. Well, they, you know, Kyle Borski, uh, you, you see the nickelback that comes in there, Jalen Wilson, uh, really nice job. Uh, you can see the in, that end zone view gives us a great look at how we slanted the defensive line and, and brought uh, Wilson as well. Uh, really nice job by Coach Cooper. Fourth and 11, quick kick. And that quick kick nets about eight yards. It wouldn't have been a first down. No. So with that, the Hounds will take over at the 25-yard line. As a reminder, fans, you can help UND Athletics continue to succeed by giving to the Greyhound Club. Your support enables us to compete at the highest level. Simply search for the Greyhound Club online, click the Donate tab, and if that doesn't work, I'll give you Matt Donovan's personal cell phone number. First and 10. Again, I, I'm still for next week, for especially two weeks when Truman comes, a, a, a good six play, seven play drive here for the UND offense. Conklin throws and Bentley just tipped away. Just tipped away. Second down. Again, we've called his name a lot tonight. Stephon Camplin, the strong safety. That's the third pass he's broken up at least in this evening's game. Yeah. But UND expected a big play there. Yeah. All three receivers were 15 plus yards down the field, and there, there was nobody, you know, in, in the check down area. So they were protecting with seven and trying to get the ball down the field. High snap. Ball goes to Bennett. Bennett finds a seam, and Bennett will take it out to the 27 yard line. He'll pick up four, and is now third down and six. Lenny, the sophomore from Fort Wayne Snyder. Snyder, a potential 5A state championship game participant this year. Played for Kurt Tipman in his days at Snyder. Snyder, the alma mater of one of the best to ever play in the National Football League, and perhaps the best NFL player from the state in Rod Woods. Yep. And I'm not sure there's much perhaps that's needed yeah. in that conversation. Had a heck of a career. Third and six. Again, the handoff to Bennett. Bennett tripped up. Just could not get the edge. And time the tackle made by Matley for Missouri S&T. Yeah, that, that's one. Boy, if you could just see it kind of developing. And if, if, if Bennett could have kept his balance and been able to run through that, but he did, didn't got enough of his legs here. You'll see right here. Just gets enough and gets the foot. As he slides down, he gets the foot. If he doesn't, if if Bennett gets that knee up just a little bit higher, I think he's got the first down. It's kind of the second consecutive second half where the offense has been in neutral for the UND Greyhounds. As Zoller's kick is much better. The difference has been the defensive effort has been stellar, really for most of the game, but but especially in the second half where it wasn't we could go against Quincy. Uh, and especially after the short punt there, uh, right on the previous possession. So again, we reference the fact that s &T has the one game left against Southwest Baptist at home. Coming up on November the 12th, the Hounds will head out to play William Jewell next week. Uindy 3-0 in league play. Just six league games in the GLVC this year. Seven in the box for the Greyhounds. Connor looks, throws, and... Dropped. Well-timed hit by Houston. Just made contact in time to throw off the timing of the receiver second down. Same play they opened the, the last drive with. They're running a shallow concept from the tight end on this side. Number three receiver is trying to clear out and, and take the safety. And then they're just number two receiver just going to run a square in. Right there. And, and just the ball's a little behind him. But yeah, those catch are, that one. Yeah, those are, those are plays you can Especially you're, you're playing your backup quarterback, you got to help him out and make that play. Hand off to Smith, and Smith 
solid gain. He'll pick up six. It'll be second and four. We have a lineman that is down at the end of that play for Missouri S&T. That is the center and Jack Krasanek that is the injured player. Well, the stat that is eye-popping tonight for S&T, their quarterbacks are combined 12 of 37 throwing the football. And these days, it's almost automatic. You're 60%, short passing game, spread the field, et cetera. So when your quarterbacks are less than a third completed passes, again, credit UND defense, but there's simply been some inefficiency in the S&T offense. Right, and I mean, we know that one should have been caught, and there have been some other ones, but there have also been some balls that have been not close to their intended sure. receiver. No doubt. Going to see the center quickly back up and head to the sidelines for Missouri S&T. Senior from Manchester, Missouri. It's a third and four. So line to gain is the 42-yard line. Clock will roll. Pounds bring five, out in the flat, catch made. That's good for a first down. Houston with the tackle. But the catch on the play for Missouri S&T. Made by Tate Nickelberry. Good play call there. UND brings uh, Schulte off the edge, and, and before Kevontae Houston can get down there, they're just running a quick flat route uh, by the slot receiver, and he's out. And fairly easy throw and catch for a first down. So for Nickelberry, it is his second catch of the season. It goes for 11 yards. Connor, again looking to throw the deep ball, and there'll be a flag thrown there. I, but I mean, I think that's the technique, the way we're teaching it. And, and that one, uh, Take a look. Grabbed him. Right. If he, if he, if he runs and he bumps him as his, you know, his hand bumps him, but you grab that shoulder. It's a 15 yard penalty. Hounds now seven penalties for 75 yards. And they may do it again right here. It's the handoff, and Smith got jarred by Schulte. He got a yard, and that was it. Second down. You end him brought Brandon Thomas off the, the corner blitz there and disguised it pretty well. You can see him take off it. I mean, but he was, he spent the entire pre-snap staring right at the receiver, which is a, an indicator to the quarterback that he's playing man coverage and, and timed it well. Second and nine, less than a minute to play before we get to the fourth quarter. Just one touchdown that was scored on the first play from scrimmage for Uindy of the quarter. Blitz, Connor throws in the flat. Catch made, small gain, two yards, that's it. It's Bryson Burns on the grab. Burns his second catch of the night. I was watching down the field. <clears throat> he, he ran the shallow route. I mean, from the snap, he was flying across the field. I, I expected him to throw to the tight end up the seam. Twenty-four seconds left to go before we get to quarter number four. Again, the blitz in the flat. Catch made, tackle made immediately. That's Thomas. Thomas has been all over the park tonight for you, Indy. Uh, yeah, they have moved him around. He, he, in the nickel package, he plays more of a safety than the corner, so he's just kind of sitting, waiting to see where the quarterback's going to throw the ball. 
They go to the flat, and he does a great job of closing on that receiver and making the tackle in the open field. Hounds, a four-score lead going to quarter number four, trying to extend their record to 7-1 and one on the season. The 17th-ranked team in the country has played like tonight, leading 35 to 7 here on the ISC Sports Network. University of Indianapolis Greyhound football on the ISC Sports Network is presented in part by Free Enterprise System, the official travel agency for Greyhound Athletics. Free Enterprise System, anything else is just a bus ride. By Prairie Farms, Indiana's Dairy. By IMCU, IMCU proudly supports you Indy Athletics and offers a free UIndy debit card. Show your school spirit and get yours at imcu.com. By Gordon Flesh, technology that works, people who perform, please visit us at gflesh.com. By Aqua Systems, with a knowledgeable staff of water experts in multiple locations, Aqua Systems has been helping people improve their water since 1959 and proud to support the University of Indianapolis. And by the Ray Skillman Automotive Group, Go to RaySkillman.com for your best deals. The offense tonight for UND has been big plays, and they have gotten some help from special teams and defense. Defense historic for UND. They have allowed 169 yards through three quarters on Missouri S&T. Miner's going to go for it here on fourth down and three at the Greyhound 29-yard line to start the fourth and final quarter. Connor throws, catch made, first down and then some. And that could end up being a touchdown, it will be. He's in. Touchdown, Missouri S&T. The umpire and field judge are, I thought we were going to have a conversation about it. Yeah, they have decided to pull back the touchdown. It's going to be first and goal at the one-yard line, so no score. Ruling is knee was out at the one yard line, but still a successful fourth down conversion and a pickup of 28 yards. It's essentially the same thing they scored the first touchdown on. It's just a little quick slant. Brandon Thomas is blitzing off the edge and they throw it almost right through his hands to the, to the area he vacated. So Smith in as the tailback on this play. He'll get the handoff and he stopped. Remember the last time that s &T had the ball inside the five, they got backed up to the four that had a kick blocked. Jacob Jones, then you see Barnett and Schulte again. Well done. And s &T is averaging less than a yard per carry tonight. Now, again, sacks affect that. Smith, 14 carries, 54 yards, so his number's not spectacular, but much more solid. They'll line up now on the opposite side of the formation. Second and goal. Again, Smith gets the handoff and again did not get there. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Third down. Kyle Borski slicing in from the left defensive end position. Good support fill. by Uindy, yep. Good fill, Keanu Guerrier, I think. Yep. And the Greyhounds are happy to let this clock keep rolling. Sitting on a four touchdown lead. Trying to start a new win streak against their opponents from Rolla, Missouri. And now a timeout taken by Missouri S&T. Let's take it with them. 13-10 left to play in this one. 35-7, Greyhounds lead it on the ISC Sports Network. Remember, when it comes to pedestrian safety, <laughs> Greyhounds don't have nine lives. No mascots or linebackers were harmed in the making of this video. Back in my day, we didn't tailgate. We stood in the rain for three hours watching the grass grow, and we liked it. Go Hounds! It's a third down and goal, and now UND wants a timeout. 
because Missouri S&T came with a formation that Uindy had not seen all night, so both coaches take a timeout. With 13-10 left to go in tonight's contest. As a reminder, Greyhound fans, you can find tons of authentic UND sportswear, T-shirts, gamewear, and giftware all at houndgear.com. It is the superstore for UND fanatics. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. As a reminder on the ISC Sports Network, we'll have High school sectional football for you. Sectional championship Friday night. I know our game on my Indy TV will be Cathedral and Lawrence Central. Haven't done the exact math, but if I had to make a guess in terms of distance from Cathedral to LC, I'd go with 1.7 miles. Oh Pull out God. a parking lot, turn right on 56, cross 465, turn left, you're there. You're going to go longer? Over, under 1.7, what do you got? I got over. Okay. I'm going Google Maps. That's right. I may have shortchanged it. We'll see. Third and goal. Full house backfield. Eye formation. Quarterback, keep, roll, throw, incomplete. He had a couple of different options and couldn't complete it. Goodwin was the intended target. Field goal unit going to be coming on here for S&T. It's Houston in coverage. I know you're looking up the answer right now. 2.3 miles. Only feels like 1.7. It's so a boy on for the, again, short field goal. This one will be right at 20 yards. Can the Hounds get one more? Not this time. s &T scores their first points of the half. Now 35-10 with 13 minutes left to go in the game. Tonight's game on ISC and Comcast 81 presented in part by the Free Enterprise System, the official travel agency for Grand Athletics, the Free Enterprise System. Anything else is just a bus ride. You want to see from the UND offense on this next drive again there. Two first downs. Yeah, their get, work, their get work the in this half has been basically one big play. That's really been it. Get, get the ball out near midfield, you know, but let's let's see if we can move the football with without, you know, needing a big play. Let's, let's get a four-yard catch. Let's get a five-yard run and just kind of – Put something together consistently here. Shorter kick, and again, Radovich calls for the fair catch. He'll make it at the 34-yard line. And Gillum already a 75-yard kickoff return tonight for you Indy 67 yard touchdown reception we're gonna make him earn the big play offensively and not kick it straight to you can it in four first half rushing touchdowns only really a couple of touches in the second half he's had 14 carries for 92 yards hounds are lined up and running S&T kind of late to get in formation and the handoff goes to Buchanan, and Buchanan just drives his legs as best he can and picks up two when there was room for nothing there, second and eight. Yeah, good, good job of keeping the legs driving and then let your buddies push you forward to get those two yards. the man that motions across the formation. Buchanan out of the flat and Conklin threw it early and Buchanan never turned around. Third down. And, and just, I mean, that's kind of, they're just a little off. Right. Like the 
play design's good. He's open. He's got to realize how quickly the quarterback might want to get the ball to him. So third and eight. Hound Street turnovers in the first half. They have not made that mistake in half number two, even if the offense has been stuck in neutral. And blitz coming. Conklin throws and incomplete. Ransom was the intended target. And my partner is, without saying a word, screaming that Lee was the open receiver on that play. I mean, he could have thrown it to him. They ran the same action the, the play before. And, and he's trying to throw the, the rail route to the, the tailback, which I, I like. But in, in trying to establish and get a first down, if he makes the throw out in the flat on second down and it's third and three, now, you, you know, just... Or in, even in that case, because they had to bump the... Bad snap. And Zoller will kick it, but that's going to be picked up in the end zone for a touchdown. Zoller was trying to knock it forward and knock it out of the end zone, but couldn't get to it. The bad punt snap leads to a free six points for Missouri S&T. So <laughs> he inadvertently almost does a good thing there. <clears throat> and I know this from experience. I had a situation where a ball got snapped over my head and I purposely kicked it out of the end zone. They're gonna try to run the, kind of the swinging gate, so to speak, the fake try on the two point conversion. Shades of Griff Whalen and Colt Anderson did not work. 35-16, and back-to-back -back plays for special teams were not so special. No, but to go, if you, it's it's illegal to do what I did. To kick it right, you to, have to, to. To kick it from the ground, to purposely kick it out of bounds. Right. And the official looked at me and said, you can't do that. And I said, I'm in the end zone. It's a penalty. It's a safety. It's better than a touchdown. And. He tipped his hat to me <laughs> and handed me the ball so that I could punt after the safety. But, but, so, you know, what he's, honestly, I mean, you want to fall on it there. Right. Or you, you, or get it out of the end zone, whatever, you know, you don't want to give up the, the touchdown. s and I, I get it. You, if you, if you get the two point conversion, you're down 17, you can tie it, but, ah. Akeel Mitchell, by the way, was the s &T player that recovered a bad punt snap. Buchanan will return this one. Buchanan cuts it back. Buchanan at the 40-yard line. Well, I forget whether it was Harry or Lloyd that talked about totally redeeming yourself, but the special teams after their first misstep of the night First major misstep of the night. Pick it back up, and you and you will have the football at the 37-yard line. And, and again, and so you know, offensively, we, we've done a nice job of, of taking advantage of of field position when we've been granted it. So let's go do it again. But still, that handoff goes to Bennett. Bennett follows his blockers. No, it's Conkling on the keeper. Conkling's got it. He fooled me. He fooled everybody else in the park. Got it to the 16-yard line. First down Greyhounds, a pickup of 21. And part of the reason we're all fooled is because watch Lenny Bennett, and this is the play they've had great success with. It's the it's the guard H counter. Lenny Bennett doesn't get touched. He ends up down here right. next to Conkling as Conkling slides. Great job. Our camera guy wasn't fooled. Well done, fellas. Alan Hughes on the camera work. Buchanan. And now you got to wonder if it's going to be, hey, keep getting six the ball just to see if you can get him that record of five touchdowns in one game. Yeah, definitely. And, and right there, man, Kendall Alexis, he just wasn't able to maintain the block. If he stays on right there, I, I think Buchanan has a chance to get that fifth touchdown.
Second and nine. Conklin looks. Conklin looking for the end zone. Diving effort. Got it. Touchdown. Bentley with the touchdown grab. Frank Bentley's third of the season. And Conklin with his second touchdown pass of half number two. Great concentration there by Frank Bentley. Just keeps running, lays out, and makes the diving catch. Bentley, the fourth year junior from Butler High School in Louisville. Second touchdown of the half for UND. Seymour on for the extra point try. And another short field touchdown for UND. 42-16. There were two receivers heading that direction, so I wasn't sure whether that was Derrick's ball or Bentley, but either way, it works. Touchdown for the Greyhounds. Yeah, great concentration. And, and really a nice throw by Christian Conklin. He threw it to where his guy could catch it, and only his guy could catch it. Tonight's game presented by Gordon Flesh, the Gordon Flesh business technology managed. Please visit gflesh.com. Last week, we were fortunate enough to have Mark Mitchell, the new women's basketball coach. Join us, Paul Casaro. This team will open up play here at Nickerson Hall in two weeks. They are hosting the GLVC and GMAC Challenge. Ohio Dominican and Lake Erie will be coming to town for games on Friday and Sunday of that weekend. Short kick, Martin Fields, 10 yard line. Martin out to the 30. And he stopped right there. By the way, normally we get to next week, and that's the time where you've got some exhibition games for you, Indy. You, Indy's actually going to play an exhibition game, and I would imagine this game's going to count on the other team's schedule. They're going to play at Western Kentucky on November the 15th. So the XO for you, Indy, comes a little bit later than it normally would. Uh -huh. EA Diddle Arena. I've had the pleasure of seeing a couple of games in that building. Great college basketball arena. On the handoff. And a solid gain of, call it five yards. As Connor remains in there, and again, Smith on the tackle. When you're going to run their record to 9 and 1 all time against their opponents tonight. 7 1 on the season with two games left to play. In the official. Super Region 3 rankings come out next week. Quick hitter, just as quick tackle. A yard shy of the first down. On the catch. I think that's Langford that made the grab, the tight end. Third and yard. Ten minutes left to go in this football game. On the handoff, Smith has the first down, keeps the legs going, and spins forward to the 49-yard line, a gain of eight. Yeah, last week the region rankings came out, but they weren't rankings. Just, hey, here are the teams that are worthy of consideration. LEAC, the GLVC, the MIAA amongst the leagues. That's not everybody, but that's, that's the vast majority of them. There are more than a handful of ANDO teams in the region so far. Toss play left side, Smith. And student body left didn't work. 
and I, I wondered about that a couple of times, especially down in the goal line, if they had any. And, and they're trying to run, you know, kind of the, the, the pin and pull scheme. They're trying to get their tight end and their tackle down and, and pull the front side guard. And they're just they're not able to get that edge set uh, against the UND defense. Second and 13. I think the general consensus is that as long as UND and Truman win their next one, Basically, it's, it's a championship game and win in your end scenario here in two weeks. They'll pull that time pass is tipped. That was the first kind of pull to the tailback. Look to throw the slant in a while, and Hounds read it. Play Schulte amongst those coming off the field, made the play, third down. I, I think, I think, and that's, that's the guy that they're looking at to determine if they're going to keep the ball with the tailback. So Schulte is able to trigger a pull read by the quarterback and then still get his hand up and get uh, a deflection on the ball. Great play by number 28. Four-man rush. Blitz coming. Connor gets away from the first rusher and again just throws this one away. Radabush was in coverage downfield. Barnett was the Defender closest to it, and the punt team will come on for Missouri s &T. Yeah, Kyle Borski does a nice job, too, here. Jalen Wilson with the edge pressure as well. By Boyce, another outstanding kick. Derrick gets out of the way because he won the intended receiver, and that was Gillum. Another two back set for you, Indy. The ball at the nine yard lot. And coming up this week, the UNI women's basketball team does have a pair of those early season exhibition games. They'll play the Redbirds of Illinois State on Tuesday in Normal, Illinois. And they will play at Northern Kentucky on Friday night. Two more tremendous college basketball venues. Redbird Arena, and I forgot the newer name, but when it was built 10 years ago, the Bank of Kentucky Center that NKU plays at. Two great buildings. Looks like we have ourselves a quarterback change for the Greyhounds. Handoff, Kellen Porter cuts back. Good, Gary has the first down, picks up 11 yards, and I think that Jaquan Buchanan's day is done. Matt Der Terosian now in for you, Indy. From a recruiting hotbed for the Greyhounds. Laguna Hills, California. And San Jose State. Transfer from San Jose State. So, yes, Division I transfer from the Mountain West Conference. Again, for I mean, those watching from Missouri or Parts outside of Indianapolis, those don't watch the grounds on a weekly basis. Conkling was the backup until three weeks ago, and Connor Kennett suffered a season-ending injury. So the Hounds going a little bit deeper here. Handoff goes to Porter, and Porter this time couldn't find the opening. He will lose a yard on the carry, and it's second down. That, that one was really close. It, it just about a split second, he was going to, the, the crease was going to open up. Now you're trying to I think I run, might. run 40 seconds of play at this juncture if you're you in. Right. And they're doing a nice job of not making the offensive linemen stay in their stance. Right. You know, so everybody knows what pace uh, that we're going on. For Dertorosian, these are his first snaps of the season. Give the handoff to Porter and Porter. Largely had to fend for himself on that play. And we'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Again, Porter from St. Louis, Missouri. Went to Missouri State, and now seems like a good time as any. Again, for those that need the tutorial, Missouri State, formerly Southwest Missouri State, plays in the Missouri Valley Conference, Missouri Valley Football Conference. Missouri S&T was formerly known as University of Missouri at Rolla. And for the last decade or so, Missouri Science and Technology. That is hence the reference to s &T. So third and a dozen. Yeah. 
And the handoff to Porter. And again, s &T was sitting on the carry and a loss of four on the play, but it was a successful drive for UND because the clock continued to roll and here comes the punt team on for the Greyhounds. Stay yeah. tuned for our post-game show. We'll have the player of the game as well as our play of the game. All coming up. Five minutes and 17 seconds of game action. Have we backed Grady into a corner at this I, point? I'm going to guess that whatever was being used, probably a football, ended ah, up in, okay. the, in the hedges. Yes. Almost a punt block. Zoller's kick is a good one. And it will... Settle down at about the 41-yard line, a 44-yard kick with no return. And William Jewell, the opponent next week, and that is a program that has, well, really struggled since becoming a member of the GLVC in football. Last year, 52-3, to I believe, was when I did that game right. early November a year ago. William Jewell comes into today's game. After today's game, they are one and seven on the season. And no one four in league play. I, was, I didn't know if it showed the how many points they've given up. I, I feel like they've given up quite a few points. On the handoff, gain is well non-existent. It's Kai Martin was the ball carrier. Martin, a sophomore from. Clearwater, Florida. My son, when he was up here pregame, noted that they have a player on the roster from IMG. As he was just doing the quick scan, but there, there are. It is a wide net that they have drawn from. Throw and through the hands of the intended target. It'll be third down. Now, I would say the same thing if Kai Martin is playing at the University of Indianapolis as I would if he's playing Missouri s and I want to know the recruiting pitch to convince a young man from Clearwater, Florida to make his way to this neck of the woods. I, My family and I luckily vacation in Clearwater Beach on a regular basis. That's a nice sales pitch to go. You know what, son? You should leave Clearwater, and you should come to Rolla, Missouri. I Or Indianapolis, for I, that matter, I, too. I completely <laughs> agree. And, and, I can't imagine that all of these kids have family in Rolla, Missouri, that that would be, well, I, you know, I'll be able to see someone. Now, what you do not know, and, and what, one of the factors that does bring some folks to that area is the, it is the fact that Missouri S&T is located basically a stone's throw from Fort Leonard Wood, which is one of the largest military, military centers in the country. Right. In fact, my uncle, it was 25 years Army, was stationed at Fort Leonard Wood for, for many years. Third down. So that could, and that could be Potentially. a connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. At some point. That makes sense. Third and ten. Just a four-man rush. Again, here comes pressure. Quarterback avoids it. Looking and again, just sling it out of bounds. In a 26-point game with four minutes left to go. You've taken enough shots in one night, even though he has only played the second half. Live to fight another day, and what team will come on for the Miners of s &T. Yeah, looking through their roster here, Texas, Florida, California, Colorado, Alabama. And, and, and looking at their roster, you see a, a handful of of transfers, but what I thought you might see a little bit more of as this is lofted and Gillum bobbles it. I think that went right to Missouri s and player. I think that will be a turnover. I think s and had it waiting for an official signal. There it is. That was going to be a fair catch, just Gillum just kind of lost it. s and had a player right on it. So the Miners will take over inside of the Greyhound 25-yard line. But to finish that thought, I thought you might see a few more, say, community college kids because there's so many right. community college programs in, in, in Kansas, Kansas that play. Mm -hmm. 
I know a lot of the NAI schools in, in Iowa live on, on JUCO kids from kind of the, the, you know, the Great Plains. So Connor and Martin in on this drive. Looking for the deep ball, and here comes the flag. Uh, Pretty obvious pass interference there. If you're Truman in two weeks, I, I got to believe that we're going to see, or Matt Holmes and I are going to see a lot of fade balls thrown, trying to get either the catch, obviously the catch, or the penalty. And that's something that's going to have to be a point of emphasis. To some degree, yes. But Truman is very much under Greg Nesbitt. Like, this is what we do. Stop it. And they are very much a run and defense type of team. A lot of tight end passes. Right, right, I've, right, I've right. seen Truman the last, I think I've seen him three times in the last three years because of the bowl game and the spring championship game here. Truman and Indy are very much mirror programs in terms of what they do. Connor looking for the end zone and went into the stanchions behind the end zone. Second down. Yeah, trying to get an interior and inside receiver to the corner, hold some coverage there, and then try to run away and just couldn't keep the ball in the field of play. Quick hitter for the end zone, and well done. Thomas on the coverage. Third down. Good play there by Thomas. Get the pass break up. Trips to the top side. Six in the box here for you, Indy. And before we get started, the middle receiver just couldn't wait. Couldn't hold his water. So third and goal now from the 14-yard line. Against the UND fans, be sure to go to athletics.und.edu, ncaa.com. In terms of the region rankings coming out this week. So they just went nickel there and probably to assist with the region rankings and try to prevent, you know, because they made sure. substitutions. Throw it for the end zone. Incomplete pass. Coverage at top, provided by Jalen Gibbon for UND. Yeah, really nice job. He maintained, maintained his, his position without holding and was in, the, was in position to play the ball and knock it out of the receiver's hands. Young man, that's transfer from... Michigan Tech is Jalen Gavon. Ladybug, nice. And that is a transfer that we can understand a little bit. Sorry, Houghton, Michigan. Yeah. Fourth and 14. And another player move. And you wonder sometimes, different quarterback, a little different cadence. But still, if you're, if you're a receiver, you just – and you're in motion, you get you can't you can't turn up. In Missouri S and T, we'll take a timeout. And we'll keep it right here at this point. And our next time we'll have Greyhound football for you on the ISC Sports Network two weeks from tonight. When Truman State, the Truman Bulldogs make their way to Key Stadium again. UND won the season finale last year at Truman. 
in a low scoring game. Allen's and Truman renew their rivalry. Saturday afternoon, November the 12th at 2 o'clock. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of the discussion will revolve around region rankings. And but the, the, this UND team is. If you just look at the scoreboard, and I'm, the comment I'm going to make about offensive consistency here, like you scored 40, you know, it was 42 points on the board. But it hasn't been because the offense has marched the ball right. down the field. They've been advantageous. They've taken advantage of what's been presented, which is always good. But, some, you know, you, you want – offensively, you want to have the confidence that you're going to march the ball. And if you need to go 70 yards, you can go 70 yards. Mavungu on the blitz. Throw and incomplete. Nowhere to go. So, turnover on downs, and Hounds will have the 19-yard lot, and their goal will be to get a first down, which would pretty much end this one. That, 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 was, that was his license to break every quarterback rule in the book. Throw it back across your body, Absolutely. late down the middle. It's fourth and goal from the 19. All the bad things that we're not supposed to do, just, hey, free license to do it. Hand off. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. It's another new back for you, Indy. That is Jaden Schlebaugh. Schlebaugh. The ball carrier. Young man from Dalton, Ohio. I think I have a pretty good handle on Indiana geography. I can't tell you where in Ohio Dalton is other than it's in Ohio. Second and nine. I'd be more likely to make up a story <laughs> that it was a typo and he's from Dayton. Hand off to Schlebaugh and Schlebaugh. Good job to keep the legs churning and spin forward. He'll pick up three yards and it's third down. So they're we're still running the guard H counter play, and it's the guy running the guard part of it. Uh, I had the fortune of watch play, the fortune of watching play for three years at Ron Colley, number 67, Grant Ray. Durturosian. By the way, this is the third game that Durturosian has played. He has not attempted a pass this year. He has had some mop-up duties. The young man from California. Schleybaugh, those carries were his ninth and tenth of the season. He'll get carry number 11, and he'll get a yard, and that's it. And the punt team will come on one more time for UIndy. But by the time they snap the ball, we'll be down to about a minute 10 left to go in tonight's game. And our postgame show will be brief, knowing that, frankly, this game has been long since decided. As Chris Keemers will pick up yet another win. And still have things to work on. Yep. He will tell you they're still a work in progress. Kick away. Chris's record now at UND, 26 and seven and 20 and three in GLBC play. So that kick got some extra roll to it. That's really non, not exactly you know, consequential in terms of the yardage, but just the additional time that rolls off the block. Well, and, and, you know, by design, I think sometimes UND uses that rug, rugby style punt to get the ball on the ground and, to negate a return.
Take the handoff. Look to throw, and there's the sack. Second sack of the game. That young man for you, Indy, and Justin Thomas, the freshman from Homewood Flossmore. Again, another South Chicago suburb player. Nice acceleration. Nice acceleration as, as the quarterback broke contain. You saw him turn and, and, and just flat run him down. Essendon has have to snap this one more time before this game officially comes to its conclusion. Hand off and that'll do it. No need for any further activity. But UND, after not scoring in the first quarter, led by 21 at halftime and were never seriously threatened in the second half. 42, 16, the final score. UND beats Missouri s and tonight. Let's get straight to our post-game show. It's presented by our friends at Prairie Farms. Overall, Dave, your final thoughts on this one? Well, it, good win. All wins are good. Things that you can still work on to get better, uh, but, you know, really like to see the offense and, and maybe part of it, you know, you are playing the backup quarterback. You are playing with your backup running back. Uh, but just some more consistency because you do have a good offensive line there in front of you. To And, and they did a pretty good job protecting the passer uh, and, and popped some big runs, but just working on that consistency uh, for the next two weeks. Time for our player of the game that is brought to us by Indian Rivers Credit Union. And once again, it is Jaquan Buchanan. Four first half touchdowns, eight touchdowns in the last two games, filling in for the injured Toriano Clinton. Again, Buchanan, a big play machine for you in the tonight. Yeah, just a great, great effort. You know, you see every one of his touchdowns, at some point there was contact uh, that he's able to run through uh, and, and then finish in the end zone. So Buchanan's final stats, 16 carries, 95 yards, had one catch for 19 yards. Again, eight touchdowns over the last two weeks for the young man from Aurora, Illinois. Finally, it is time for our play of the game. Our play of the game is brought to us by Aqua Systems, and we're going to go with the rare non-touchdown for Buchanan. How about this catch from Frank Brentley for the final touchdown of the game to make it 42-16 UND, and the young man from Butler High School in Louisville gets our Aqua Systems play of the game. UND runs their record to 7-1. Missouri S&T will fall to 3-6 on the season, and the victory bell can be put away for another couple of weeks here by Matt Donovan and the University of Indianapolis. That'll do it for our broadcast this evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the ISC Sports Network, the GLVC Sports Network, and Comcast 81. For Dave Burton and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, good night in the south side. Hounds win it by 26. Thanks for watching. Windy Greyhound football. At Aqua Systems, we believe in one simple idea that it should be easy to get great water. That's why we provide a hassle free sales process with money back guarantees and the best warranties anywhere, all on equipment made in the USA. In fact, at Aqua Systems, we make it so easy to fix your home's water that nine out of ten people who shop with us buy from us. Contact Aqua Systems today. You'll love your water.